we believe that these purposes will help us to get a better understanding of what life looks like for a woman after college so that we may be able to prepare ourselves better and to take on the necessary actions to achieve our dreams. In order for us to achieve that vision, we are guided by three missions, which are to empower, connect, and grow the women community at UI. Uh, about today's event, Ask a Sister, Women in FNCG, it is an interactive panel discussion conducted by Universitas Indonesia Women in Business, along with respective speakers who are UI alumni that work in the FNCG industry. This series aspires to be a platform for students, specifically women students at Universitas Indonesia, to deepen their understanding of a career in FMCG and a career path as an MD. We sincerely hope that by the end of the session, you may gain insights as to how our distinguished speakers may prepare themselves to ace their recruitment process as well as how they develop their career in their respective um, companies. So for our first session, we have a very smart and also accomplished speakers here with us, Ka Nadia Kamilia and Ka Cheryl Adinda, for the first session, which is a glimpse of the FMCG world. Each speaker will present around 20 minutes about their career, and afterwards, we will have a Q&A session for uh, 20 minutes as well. We would like to remind you a couple of things before we start the event. The first is to always ensure that your audio is on mute throughout the session. And remember that we will not be receiving any direct questions in the Q&A session. So please drop as many questions as you'd like through our Slido page in accordance to the code numbers that is already stated in the chat box. And you can also read the complete set of rules in the chat box as well. Okay, so without further ado, Let's welcome our very first speaker, Ka Nadia Camilia. She is currently a customer supply chain executive at L'Oreal, and she is an alumna of the engineering faculty batch 2014. Ka Nadia, the time and floor uh, is yours. Okay, hello, can you hear my voice? Yes. Yes, okay, thank you, Myra. Uh, first of all, thank you for women, uh, UI, UI, UI Women in Business Team for inviting me to this event. Okay, maybe we can start with my slide. So uh, today I will talk about uh, maybe focus to women in FMCG industry. Aku juga bakal specifically uh, explain about my role as a supply chain in FMCG. Okay, next. So, um, let me introduce myself. My name is Nadira Kamilia Permatasari. You can call me Nadira. Um, I'm graduating from Chemical Engineering UI, batch 2014. So, aku uh, graduate di tahun 2018 during my campus year. I also actively involved in some of uh, activities in campus, also leadership activities outside campus called Excel Future Leaders. And I also had some uh, internship experience in Medco Energy and also in Unilever Indonesia as supply chain intern. Currently, I'm working in L'Oreal Indonesia uh, as a supply chain uh, executive for Modern Trade Channel. And uh, I'm graduating from YEP program, which is MT program for L'Oreal Indonesia. And I also will uh, change my career next year. Aku bakal ganti role jadi end-to-end -end supply chain for new business line in L'Oreal called uh, Active Cosmetic Division. If you want to connect, uh, you can connect uh, with me in LinkedIn and also in Instagram. Next. Okay, so how do I start my career in FMCG? Uh, aku udah mention sebelumnya background aku itu di chemical engineering. So I had no idea what kind of uh, FMCG industry itu seperti apa. Aku nggak tahu karena back then aku, uh, goals aku pengen jadi engineer di oil and gas. Karena chemical engineering itu... Uh, Mostly emang pengennya ke arah oil and gas. So, waktu di uh, senior year, I asked my senior yang kerja dulu di Unilever uh, dan di Danone. Terus aku tanya, um, seperti apa sih kerja di FMCG? Terus ap apakah ada opportunity saat itu di internship di salah satu perusahaan FMCG? Waktu aku semester 8. Nah, waktu itu aku akhirnya apply di salah satu program internshipnya Unilever. Namanya Unilever Leadership Internship Program. 
uh, aku apply itu saat skripsi juga ya. Jadi di semester 8 aku apply as a supply chain intern. Uh, and that time I learn uh, more about how FMCG company works and divisionnya apa aja sih di FMCG dan juga I get holistic view about uh, the industry as well. Gitu. Nah, nextnya uh, aku after graduation eh sorry tadi masih yang slide sebelumnya. Uh, Oke, okay. jadi after graduation aku itu di offer oleh L'Oreal Indonesia to join the MC program. And at that time aku juga uh, di rotate to sales operation division and then uh, rotating within the supply chain division and I got opportunity to work in different division and also I got knowledge in end to end supply chain. Maybe ini some of information for you. Jadi FMCG companies itu usually accept applicants from all major. Jadi buat misalnya kalian background-nya di marketing or business mau apply ke supply chain atau engineering mau apply ke marketing or uh, vice versa itu kayak uh, the opportunity is there. Jadi why aja uh, supply chain itu biasanya um, mostly dari industrial engineering. Jadi aku di chemical engineering itu sama sekali nggak belajar tentang supply chain and opportunity juga selalu ada. Jadi just go on. Next um, next slide. So why I chose FMCG first because it serve consumer needs. Jadi kan kalian juga tahu ya FMCG kan mem- menjual uh, barang-barang kebutuhan sehari-hari. Jadi emang ada ada satisfying sendiri kalau kita bisa serve uh, banyak uh, kebutuhan orang-orang dengan kita bekerja di FMCG. Uh, nextnya itu FMCG is the key frontier of innovation. Seperti yang kalian tahu, FMCG kan stands for fast moving consumer goods. Jadi, the brands are constantly rebranding, creating new product and new um, packaging, and marketing their products in different way. Jadi, uh, FMCG industry itu dikenal dengan their innovation, they need to be agile, so it will be challenging to work in FMCG. And next, uh, opportunity to have a global career. As we know that many of largest FMCG companies are multinational, yeah, so the opportunity, opportunity to have a training or go abroad for a job is always there. Gitu. And next, the career stability-nya. Regardless of economic changes or trends, people will always need FMCG product. Jadi demand-nya akan selalu ada. Contohnya saat sekarang ini, di masa pandemik, Uh, di company aku sendiri di L'Oreal itu kita sama sekali nggak ada uh, cut salary or layoff jadi because of the demand is always there even in the pandemic situation jadi karir kalian pun juga akan stabil next so this is three reasons why I love working in FMCG so after two years two and a half years ya kalau include internship uh, working in FMCG so apa sih yang bikin aku uh, sangat cinta kerja di sini Yang pertama itu every day is different. As we know that uh, FMCG is very innovative, very challenging, very um, agile ya. Jadi emang challenge yang kita akan dapat day to day itu akan selalu berbeda. Selalu ada problem baru, masalah baru, dan karena kita emang selalu innovate, jadi kita akan ketemu uh, project dan masalah-masalah baru setiap harinya. So, kamu nggak akan bosan kalau kerja di FMCG. And next itu energetic and friendly culture. Uh, as I mentioned, jadi kalau nang di FMCG itu mostly kita work collaboratively with a cross uh, function division gitu. Jadi nggak akan kerja dengan misalnya supply chain aja, tapi kita akan kerja with marketing div- division, commercial and operation. So uh, karena emang mindset semua orang itu untuk um, apa ya kayak friendly dan juga open minded. Jadi kamu akan ketemu sama orang-orang yang mau kerja bareng gitu. Yang ketiga itu uh, barang gratis atau freebies ya. Jadi as we know kan FMCG emang produk uh, jualan produk gitu. Biasanya kalau misalnya kita kerja di FMCG itu uh, if we have a new product development or a big event like Christmas or misalnya lebaran, uh, we will receive uh, some of products from company gitu. Next So next, I will talk further about my job in supply chain uh, in FMCG industry yeah, specifically. So what is it like to be a supply chain in FMCG industry? Next. So before going further, uh, aku akan jelasin dulu apa sih itu supply chain. Mungkin banyak dari kalian yang belum familiar ya. Apa sih itu sebenarnya supply chain? Jadi supply chain itu adalah entire system dari di mana kita mulai produksi, delivering product, Dari kita sourcing the raw material sampai final delivery ke produk itu ke konsumen kita. Jadi mungkin di gambar ini di sebelah kanan adalah uh, simple cycle dari uh, supply chain process. Uh, starting from the consumer, 
kita melihat adanya demand dari konsumen, uh, lalu kita akan memproduksi suatu barang. Jadi kalau kita as FMCG industry itu, kita sebutnya sebagai supplier. Jadi kita akan buying the raw materials, uh, lalu kita convert ke finished good products di manufacture. Setelah barangnya itu menjadi finished good dan siap, siap untuk didistribusi, uh, lalu ada proses namanya uh, logistic and distribution. Itu kita akan mengirimkan uh, finished good kita, barang-barang kita dari uh, our FMCG company ke point of sale atau retailer. retailer. Jadi uh, dari retailer ini bisa dua ya, bisa offline or off- online channel. Kalau offline itu, uh, for example, L'Oreal itu kita distribute ke convenience store, ke drugstore. Kalau online, um, mungkin e-commerce ya, lebih e-commerce like Shopee or Tokopedia. Oke, okay, next. So this is how uh, I want to simplify uh, what is supply chain lagi ya. Jadi kalau mungkin tadi ada yang bingung dengan uh, the grafiknya, the, the apa kayak sistem dari supply chain. Nah seba- sebenarnya secara simple itu we are responsible for the entire process from production to the final delivery of the product ke point of sales. Jadi kalau di gambar yang atas ini kita emang uh, apa responsibility kita itu berawal dari produksi uh, barang kita. Contohnya ini adalah kita produksi lipstick. Dan kita juga tanggung jawab sampai barangnya itu uh, berada di point of sales kita. Jadi kita harus make sure 100% availability in stores. Nggak ada namanya out of, out of stock di uh, store, karena itu akan membuat adanya uh, opportunity to lose sales. Gitu. Next. Oke, okay, nah ini beberapa uh, supply chain role in FMCG. It might be different uh, untuk beberapa company ya. Jadi kayak ini secara garis besarnya aja. If the misalnya kalau brand atau company-nya itu lebih besar, biasanya uh, role di supply chain itu akan lebih banyak. So I make it very simple. Nah ini beberapa role yang uh, harusnya ada ya di setiap FMCG company. So let's start first with the demand planner. Uh, so basically demand planner itu tugasnya adalah uh, nge-forecast uh, future product demands and maintain inventory level. Jadi si demand planner ini will work together uh, with marketing and also with with the commercial team uh, to get insight. Uh, jadi si demand planner ini akan dapat insight nih dari tim marketing dan tim komersial kira-kira untuk suatu barang itu kebutuhannya melihat dari market tiga bulan ke depan berapa sih gitu. Nah nanti dia akan melakukan namanya um, forecast meeting gitu. Jadi di forecast meeting ini mereka melihat uh, dalam in quantity ya berapa sih untuk misalnya uh, garnier pencuci muka gitu selama tiga bulan ke depan uh, kira-kira untuk bulan ini berapa sih kebutuhan untuk produksinya gitu dan dia juga akan maintain inventory level. Nah selanjutnya setelah dari demand planner. Uh, angka si uh, forecast-nya itu akan dikasih ke namanya supply planner. The role of supply planner is to managing inventory supply and production to meet customer demand. Jadi mungkin secara simpelnya uh, dia itu lebih bertugas ke supply ya. Ke supply atau ke production. Jadi they work together with the production team di manufacture untuk make sure um, barang yang diproduksi itu sesuai dengan angka uh, forecast dari demand planner. Itu next itu production manufacturing, uh, maybe it's more like uh, engineering uh, fokus job ya. Jadi mostly emang backgroundnya emang engineering kalau di uh, production manufacturing. Jadi tugasnya adalah ensure smooth and efficient manufacturing process. Gitu. Dan next uh, setelah uh, finish goodnya jadi, uh, role selanjutnya adalah logistic and transportation. Jadi most of FMCG company not directly uh, delivery from manufacture to the point of sales. Jadi ada Um, third party atau within the manufacture and POS itu ada namanya warehouse atau distribution center. Jadi the one who um, yang lebih apa ya lebih bertugas untuk menyebarkan barang-barang kita itu uh, ke point of sales. Jadi responsibilnya lebih ke to the movement dari barang kita sih dan juga lebih ke maintaining uh, storage di warehouse kita. Itu namanya logistic and transportation. Nah next ada namanya customer supply chain which is my role currently in L'Oreal. Jadi kita itu lebih work together with the customer ya atau client to ensure healthy stock level and availability uh, in our customer. Gitu. Mungkin aku akan uh, jelasin further in the next slide. Okay, so who is customer supply chain? So basically, uh, as a customer supply chain, uh, kita itu adalah someone who becomes a bridge between a company and a customer. So we will work together mostly with the supply chain side uh, from retail, retailer or customer. 
Jadi kita harus ensure availability in stores. Jadi kita harus uh, make sure ya maintain service level atau barang yang kita kirim ke customer itu 100% and also on the right time or jadi OTV itu stand to on time in full. Jadi kita make sure semua barang kita kirim itu on time dan 100% fulfillment-nya. Next, kita juga harus maintain healthy stock in stores. Jadi uh, karena kita banyak kerja bareng sama customer, kita juga harus melakukan, melakukan analisis sama mereka apakah stok yang mereka hold itu overstock atau produktif atau enggak gitu. Jadi banyak kan kita lebih melakukan analisis dan meeting uh, with our customer. Jadi customer ini bukan bukan pembeli ya. Jadi membedakan adalah customer dan consumer. Kalau customer itu misalnya kayak convenience store, hyper super. Jadi consumer itu adalah yang make seperti kita yang beli gitu. Jadi customer itu lebih ke company yang uh, first buyer dari CFMCG si company gitu. Next. Oke, okay, so tadi kan aku udah mention ya salah satu uh, tugas kita adalah uh, KPI dari supply chain, customer supply chain adalah on time in full. Jadi on time in full itu uh, meaning that customer gets of everything they ordered on the day they expected. Jadi mungkin gambarannya seperti ini. Uh, jadi uh, tanggung jawabnya kita adalah kita harus make sure supplier or FMCG company distribute ke retailer itu uh, jadi semua barang yang di order oleh retailer uh, we give them 100% fulfillment dan juga sesuai dengan the day delivery they expected gitu. If we can give 100% OTIF, it can increase customer satisfaction and also sales opportunity. So for your information, my first MT project in supply chain was to improve OTIF in CVS channel and that was very exciting project because I have an opportunity to work with a cross-functional division and also CVS channel is I think one of the biggest uh, channel yeah, in L'Oreal so the opportunity is very big saat itu aku untuk uh, banyak belajar sama uh, teman-teman dari divisi lain. So what is the key learning saat aku menjalani project itu? So first do not be afraid of doing something new. Kadang kita kalau misalnya baru um, kerja atau baru masuk ke company kadang suka takut nih ngasih uh, idea-idea baru, nah itu juga boleh kayak gitu kita harus berani, misalnya kita berani untuk melakukan propose suatu perubahan as long as it can lead to a good result kita harus berani dan juga bawa emang membawa analisis ya, jadi nggak nggak hanya kayak propose something new tapi kita juga bawa background analysis yang kita punya agar lebih dipercaya orang-orang yang kedua be like a sponge, jadi kayak kita harus lebih ke apa ya lebih ke, lebih ke being a good listener ya gitu jadi kita harus uh, bisa belajar dari banyak orang apalagi kita kalau di FMCG itu lebih banyak kerja dengan cross functional decision gitu jadi kita harus bisa lebih listen to other uh, person gitu uh, always yang ketiga always keep an open mind and collaborative spirit jadi aku juga udah mention kan sebelumnya kita um, banyak kerja bareng divisi lain jadi collaborative spirit is very important uh, in working in FMCG Oke, okay, next. Oke, okay, uh, selanjutnya adalah facts or false. Jadi lebih ke fakta atau mitos nih. Uh, mungkin ini aku put beberapa hal yang saat sebelum aku masuk FMCG juga sering aku pertanyakan ya. Yang pertama itu, uh, flexible working hour and can work from home. So, ini adalah fakta. Jadi, uh, as we know that sekarang, most of FM, I think most of FMCG company itu offer uh, work from home for their employee ya. Yeah. Dan juga working hour itu lebih fleksibel. Jadi, it's not 9 to 5 mostly. Uh, you can come to the office like 11 and pulang itu lebih malam. Jam 7, it's very possible. Jadi, you can uh, manage your own working time. And second is the clear career progression. Yes, it's true. Uh, what uh, the difference between corporate and startup company adalah kalau misalnya di corporate itu lebih jelas misalnya uh, after graduating from MT program, misalnya jadi junior manager and in the next uh, two or three years you can get promoted as uh, apa gitu. Jadi lebih lebih jelas dari awal career career progressionnya. Gitu. And next, not everyone can graduate from MT program. Yes, it's true. Karena aku juga graduate dari MT program. And I think the, semua MT program have like uh, assessment test or assessment presentation uh, every quarterly or maybe twice a year. Yeah. And the HR and also your boss will assess you uh, whether you are fit to the company or to the division or not. And if it's not, there's a possibility kamu uh, di stop dari the program. Gitu. And next, you need to have engineering background for supply chain position. 
itu mitos ya uh, karena sekarang aja um, I think 30 or 40 persen employee in L'Oreal ya for supply chain division is coming from other than engineering like uh, business marketing and accounting so as long as you um, like suka kerja dengan numbers and Excel just go to just apply in supply chain position next supply chain is dominated by men enggak ini udah salah besar sekarang karena sekarang aja 60% anti uh, supply chain di L'Oreal itu uh, women jadi emang udah banyak juga sih sekarang women di supply chain jadi enggak 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 full dominated by men from for now gitu and empty program is the only way to get in nah ini salah satu question yang saat aku fresh grad juga pertanyakan apakah kalau misalnya kita gagal di program empty kita udah nggak bisa ya join FMCG karena mostly emang banyakkan di offer empty program ya enggak sih jadi kar- kalian aja-aja aja cari di job portal mereka juga banyak kok offer uh, direct hire other than empty program next Oke, okay, um, are women getting equal career opportunities in FMCG industry? The answer is 100% yes. So, I found this picture in L'Oreal website. Then, it's very interesting that um, the number of women and men in BOD position in L'Oreal Indonesia is equal. If you can, if you count the number of women and men, it's actually uh, sama ya numbernya. Jadi, kayak uh, message-nya adalah di sini, kalau... Kalau misalnya kamu ingin berkarir di FMCG, the opportunity to be in a leader, leadership position, itu selalu ada opportunity-nya. Karena sekarang emang malah di-empower ya, kalau cewek-cewek itu bisa berada di leadership position atau di BOD di suatu FMCG company. Gitu. Jadi jangan takut untuk bisa berkarir di FMCG. Next. No, oke. Okay. Nah, ini uh, last slide aku. Jadi ini salah satu quote favorit aku ya. Uh, Career is a life journey, not a destination. Mungkin ini message-nya untuk uh, teman-teman yang akan berkarir, lagi misalnya lagi uh, di semester akhir akan berkarir atau baru lulus dan soon akan apply buat kerja. Uh, mungkin ini juga oke okay ya. Um, apa sih quotes-nya? Career is a life journey atau destination. Jadi jangan terlalu fokus dengan end goal kalian. Misalnya end goal ingin menjadi ABC, jangan don't rush yourself untuk cepat-cepat meng- mencapai hal itu. Lebih ke kalian enjoy the journey-nya because the journey is where we learn, grow, mature, and become stronger. Don't compare yourself with others dan compare kayak banyak opportunity yang lebih bagus di tempat lain. Jangan seperti itu. Just focus on yourself, your growth, and just be um, apa ya, be grateful because karir itu sekali lagi adalah journey gitu. Jadi kalian harus apa ya lebih ke apa lebih ke apa learn the journey jadi nggak langsung fokus ke akhirnya karena itu akan membuat kalian lebih overwhelmed dengan perjalanannya gitu jadi jadi lebih ke uh, enjoy the journey gitu thank you oke okay, thank you very much Kanadira itu a very uh, informative presentation about your experience in L'Oreal and from what I can conclude from your presentation uh, Firstly, you have a background in chemical engineering, and you originally wanted to be in the oil and gas industry, but you interned at Unilever, and you gladly told us that FMCG accept all majors, and then uh, a little bit about supply chain, it has a lot of different roles, uh, and then your job is in the CSCM, which is to ensure healthy stock level and availability. And lastly, you also emphasize that career is a life journey and not a destination so um, we should focus more focus more on ourselves okay so next we are going to continue with our second speaker let's welcome kak cheryl adinda currently senior key account manager at png and an alumna of the economics and business faculty batch 2010. Kak cheryl the time and floor is yours Hi, thank you, Humaira. Can you hear my voice now? Yes, I can hear. Is it clear? Okay. okay, thank you. Hi, everyone. Um, can you play the slide, please, uh, Humaira? Yeah. Okay, uh, everyone. Uh, thank you so much for uh, UI Women in Business um, for inviting me to be the speaker uh, 
of today's session. Uh, so I think uh, previously Nadira uh, already shared a bit uh, pretty much uh, about the FMCG industry, right? So I think uh, I'll just share my experience because I come from different function uh, with uh, Nadira. Uh, jadi kalau tadi Nadira kan uh, supply chain, so uh, my role and my function in PNG is actually sales, uh, sales and marketing department. Uh, next slide, please. Yeah, so I think this is just a little bit uh, background about me. So uh, as uh, per shared by Humaira, uh, I was graduated back in 2014 from uh, Faculty of Economics. Uh, I'm majoring in marketing, class of 2010. Uh, so I think back then uh, when I was in FAUE, uh, I was actively involved in um, sports association, uh, which is uh, in this case, uh, futsal, women's futsal. And then I also joined um, a global uh, student exchange, a global volunteer in uh, ISEC, uh, ISEC organization. And then uh, I'm a new new mom uh, with uh, one son. So I just uh, recently uh, gave birth to my son uh, back in June. So actually currently I'm a full-time mom. I'm still on my maternity leave right now. Um, uh, next month, uh, hopefully I'll be back office soon. Yeah. Next slide, please. Yeah, uh, mungkin uh, pertama mungkin aku jelasin a bit about, uh, I think FMCG industry pretty much uh, Nadira already covered about the FMCG. So it's a fast moving consumer goods, right? So uh, I'm coming uh, from PNG. Uh, so this is just a PNG one-on-one -on -one for everyone. Uh, uh, those of you who you know, this is your first time hearing about PNG. Karena waktu aku pertama kali kuliah juga, to be honest, I never heard about PNG. Uh, but then uh, ketika dijelasin uh, what are the brands, uh, then aku tahu gitu. Oh, PNG itu ini gitu. So uh, about PNG, it's Procter and Gamble. Uh, we are one of the world's uh, biggest FMCG company. Uh, and then we are home to many world's uh, number one brands. Mungkin kalau bisa lihat di sini fotonya. Uh, so PNG itu apa sih? Mungkin kalau di Indonesia kalian lebih familiar with the brands itself. Uh, kita uh, we are the company of uh, producer of Pantene. Uh, jadi our hair care portfolio is Pantene, uh, Head and Shoulders, uh, Rejoice, and if you know Herbal Essences. Uh, lalu kita punya home care juga. Uh, home care kita punya Downy, and then if you know uh, Gillette. Uh, in baby care we have Pampers. Uh, terus uh, oral care we have Oral B. Uh, and many more brands, many other brands lah, basically. Uh, so that's uh, all of those brands yang aku sebutin itu, it's uh, PNG. Uh, and then the third one, uh, we are actually uh, already uh, present in Indonesia market about 30 years. Uh, mungkin kalau di compare sama other FMCG company, 30 years, uh, we are considered quite young uh, in Indonesia uh, untuk 30 years because in the global itself, I think, uh, kita udah established more than 100 years. Uh, and then number four, in terms of value, uh, I think ini mungkin um, uh, apply to uh, FMCG company, biasanya kita very value diversity sama gender equality. Yang tadi Nadira juga udah sempat share kan beberapa, mungkin di uh, other FMCG company juga, uh, female and male itu benar-benar very equal. And then lastly, we are also awarded uh, global top companies and also world's uh, most reputable companies uh, from uh, Forbes and Fortune. Next slide, please. Uh, mungkin ini uh, aku a little bit sharing about how is it like uh, working in PNG in terms of culture ya, untuk company culture uh, uh, itself gitu. Uh, ini mungkin, ini this is based on my uh, opinion, so this is not coming from a PNG website or others because uh, I think all of you can just click on Google and then uh, search a PNG website and see what's the value that the company share uh, to the broader uh, audience, right? But this is actually from my uh, very personal opinion. So I think first, uh, working in, in PNG and FMCG in general, I think it uh, we really work in a multifunction uh, team, uh, as per shared previously also with by Nadira, right? Uh, jadi kita itu benar-benar workingnya, let's say tadi Nadira working in customer supply chain. Uh, now I'm coming from sales function. Itu nggak sendiri-sendiri gitu. Jadi nggak sales kerjanya sama sales aja, marketing kerjanya sama marketing aja. Tapi uh, we really work in the multifunction. So in my team, uh, there's no such team as like, oh, this is sales team, this is no. But one team, we have uh, all of the function there. So aku punya uh, finance guy, I have the supply chain guy, uh, I also have my marketing guy. So uh, satu tim itu benar-benar multifunction. Even um, uh, dari probably purchasing, jadi benar-benar semua function itu uh, dilibatin di satu tim. 
Uh, so that's one. I think the second one yang benar-benar menurutku uh, this is very distinctive versus other company probably in FMCG company itu um, uh, especially in PNG we are very encouraged to do straight talk. Straight talk tuh apa sih? Jadi um, straight talk tuh mungkin kalau di uh, Asian culture kayak kita di Indonesia mungkin suka nggak enakan gitu kan. Jadi kadang kita misalnya pengen let's say we want to say no but karena kita nggak enak jadi kita nggak say no gitu atau kita punya different opinion than others tapi we just uh, we just don't state it in front of uh, the public gitu jadi kalau di sini kita benar-benar di encourage untuk straight talk gitu uh, whatever you think if you have different opinion just say it gitu whether it's to your uh, juniors whether it's to your peers or even to your uh, to a higher level gitu jadi misalnya in the meeting kalau kamu nggak setuju sama bos kamu atau nggak setuju sama director level or even VP level then you can uh, say it Uh, out loud gitu di meeting. I think that's uh, it's a very uh, strong culture in PNG which is straight talk. Gitu. Number three, I think it's data based. Uh, every FMCG company, I think it's very data based company. Jadi every every everything that you say, everything that you propose, everything that you recommend, it's uh, it's really based. It, you really need to bring it with a strong data. Uh, jadi itu itu very ibaratnya kalau di FMCG kayaknya itu culture yang sangat kental juga gitu nggak bisa kita just recommend something out of oh, this is out of my gut feeling gitu tapi nggak ada data yang mensupport I think uh, itu juga uh, biasanya rekomendasi apa kalau misalnya kita punya proposal kayak gitu langsung ditolak lah kalau data datanya tuh nggak strong gitu supporting datanya terus number four uh, flexible and agile jadi uh, as you know it's a fast moving judulnya ya udah fast moving uh, consumer goods kan jadi uh, everything it's so fast jadi uh, apa namanya kita juga di dalam sini tuh kita menjal gitu jadi it's a, satu culture yang juga uh, sangat kentara lah kalau di FPG company jadi kalau misalnya tiba-tiba uh, ada sesuatu yang berubah kita harus agile gitu plannya harus adjust jadi nggak bisa kita let's say kita bikin plan for next year tapi ketika nanti di tengah jalan tiba-tiba uh, tidak sesuai dengan apa yang kita harapkan kita nggak bisa nunggu another one year just to apa namanya to fix everything kita benar-benar mesti uh, by the time the issue happen by the time the problem happen uh, then we need to uh, search for the solution uh, benar langsung gitu right away uh, and then the last uh, itu this is um, menurut aku adalah accountable jadi up di di FMCG I think you need to be uh, responsible and accountable Uh, atas ke apa yang kamu propose, let's say misalnya uh, you propose something, you say something that you really need to be accountable and committed lah. Let's say uh, kamu propose uh, new things, new way of doing things, tapi ketika itu nggak berhasil, then you also need to be accountable for. That. Next slide please. Ya, yeah, ini mungkin uh, just a glimpse of career areas in PNG. Uh, so the one that I highlighted, which is in sales, ya. Jadi uh, aku ini come from sales function. So these are the uh, career areas di PNG. Mungkin if you want to uh, click on the details, you can see in the PNG website. But I think today I'll just talk uh, very specifically about my uh, function, which is sales. Ya, yeah, jadi basically career in sales, uh, I break down break down it to two um, two types of uh, work. Karena basically di sales itu ini sih yang uh, yang payung besarnya itu adalah dua gitu. Yang pertama it's external facing, yang kedua internal facing. Maksudnya apa sih external facing sama internal facing? Jadi kalau external facing, uh, you you will work with uh, our counterpart di luar PNG. So uh, kalau tadi Nadira udah sempat share juga. customer supply chain. So we work with our customers. So customers sama consumers itu beda. Ya. Jadi customers itu tadi channels. So our customers itu our retailer misalnya di hypermarket atau supermarket, di minimarket on all those channels. Kalian kan tahu ada beberapa pemain lah ya, ada beberapa retailer. So those are uh, our customers. So uh, external facing kita work uh, with them, with our partners lah basically with our retailers. Uh, internal facing itu kita work within PNG. So uh, who we face is actually our PNG people as well. Jadi kita work with uh, our own team, we work with our um, directors and then we work with our counterparts in the uh, in the global global head, sorry, the global office, uh, regional office. Jadi itu bedanya sih. Jadi uh, what you do and learn so i'll talk uh, about the external facing role first jadi my experience itu aku come from external facing role 
gitu. Jadi yang kalian akan pelajari di sini apa sih? Of course, uh, you'll do a sales strategy development. So gimana sih cara kamu um, apa namanya? Cara kamu uh, membesarkan sales PNG di uh, di account kamu. Di account tuh meaning your customers ya tadi misalnya di um, misalnya di channel supermarket nya supermarket A misalnya gimana caranya uh, our PNG brands or PNG products uh, itu successfully uh, bisa grow terus di account tersebut that specific account itu. Number two yang pasti kita akan do and learn juga itu execution excellence. Jadi kita harus execute perfectly di store ya di tokonya gitu. Jadi ketika kalian ke toko uh, misalnya promo promonya jalan atau enggak di toko itu that's uh, that's the role of the external facing team gitu kita yang harus make sure ketika ada promo ya promonya beneran jalan ketika ada let's say uh, display displaynya bener-bener kelihatan that's that's our job gitu. number three of course of course customer relationship management kita harus manage relationship with those accounts kan jadi let's say kita tadi pegang supermarket A ya kita harus manage relationship sama mereka gitu gimana caranya uh, we build a long term uh, relationship dan sustainable gitu uh, I think Number four and five ini sales and share growth plan. Tadi uh, gimana cara kita tetap bisa grow our brand di toko-toko mereka, gitu kan? Itu kita yang harus uh, bikin plannya, gitu. Share meaning gimana cara kita bisa gain market share, gitu. Because uh, in FMCG kan ada beberapa pekerjaan yang itu adalah tugasnya external facing team untuk uh, gimana cara kita bisa menang lah. Share tuh basically menang. Kita bisa menang over our competitors. Uh, and then lastly itu joint business plans. What is joint business plans? Joint business plans tuh basically business plan itu bareng sama uh, supermarket A ini tadi. Jadi ini bukan cuma PNG plan, tapi plannya supermarket A. Gimana caranya dengan uh, kita grow our PNG brands itu supermarket A itu juga bisa benefit from it gitu. Enggak cuma PNG yang diuntungin gitu. Uh, itu untuk yang external facing, untuk internal facing, basically itu justru di ibaratnya itu plan yang ngekuk plannya, yang masak plannya itu di belakang. Jadi uh, mereka yang bikin uh, tadi misalnya promotion, dia yang akan kasih tahu ke external facing, this is the promotion ya, strateginya kayak gini buat produk kita gitu kan. Uh, mereka yang do budget optimization, apakah kita bikin produk ini nih untung atau enggak, uh, ROI, promotion efficiency itu uh, di belakangnya, category growth model, mungkin tadi aku udah sempat share di PNG kan ada beberapa kategori, Jadi ada hair care, itu yang shampoo kan, terus ada home care, ada downy, terus ada gilet, uh, grooming care gitu. Setiap kategori itu beda growth modelnya gitu. Growth model tuh meaning setiap kategori itu kalau mau ngegedein shampoo tuh caranya beda sama cara ngegedein uh, pisau cukur misalnya gilet. Jadi itu itu ya itulah yang dikerjain sama internal facing team gitu. Uh, terus uh, again itu lead the planning and deployment of strategies. Jadi uh, intinya planning of the product yang ngekuk. Uh, apa namanya produk yang akan dijual itu adalah internal facing team nanti mereka juga yang akan nge-share ke external facing team hey, uh, external facing team uh, kita bilangnya account team lah account team this is the plan for this uh, brands untuk quarter ini please execute with excellent gitu Jadi, basically itulah uh, difference nya gitu next slide please Ya, yeah. nah mungkin aku share uh, my personal experience ya. Jadi ini my PNG journey, basically. Jadi di 2014 uh, aku pertama ini uh, aku join uh, ASEAN Business Challenge competition. Jadi pertama aku dari competition, and then di 2014-2015 pertama aku uh, do uh, sales training. If you see that one of the picture itu actually aku jualan ke toko-toko kecil waktu itu. Jadi itu trainingnya di PNG. Mungkin kalau sales semua tuh biasanya tiga bulan pertama kita akan ke field untuk jualan. Uh, this is one of the executions lah contohnya kalau kalian tahu nih ya kayak gini lah biasanya di toko kecil kan kayak gitu modernya. And then 2015 to 2018 uh, aku work in SK2 it's one of our brands. And then yang uh, terakhir before I took maternity leave itu aku handle uh, one of uh, the mini market retailers. Uh, next slide please. Yeah. Uh, nah ini mungkin aku took my experience when I did my SK2 assignment. Jadi kalau if you know SK2, it's one of our PNG brand. Tapi it's a little bit different ya dari yang kita punya our core business. Jadi SK2 is a prestige uh, product portfolio gitu. Jadi di sini what I do uh, waktu itu sama. Jadi I work with my our retailers. Jadi kalau kalian tahu kan SK2 is distributed in um, uh, department stores. Nah itu kita work sama uh, department store beberapa department store di Indonesia yang ada SK2 gitu. Jadi aku ada manage total portfolio. Jadi total semua retailer itu aku yang handle. Jadi I work with multiple retailers gitu. Ini one of the example misalnya Sogo kalau kalian tahu it's one of our account as well. 
Jadi itu kita uh, yang kita do adalah kita of course grow sales gitu kan uh, uh, for total Indonesia. And then yang kedua juga ini agak a little bit different waktu itu kita uh, acquire a new users for the brand karena it's one of the growth model lah. One of the growth uh, criteria itu kita harus uh, terus-terusan dapetin uh, pengguna baru gitu buat this uh, specific product. Terus kita juga dapat uh, bigger support itu juga apa ya uh, pekerjaan kita gitu untuk dapetin support dari retailer partners kita. Terus kita juga work with uh, our third party organization yaitu beauty counselor gitu. Jadi itu uh, one of uh, our job adalah waktu itu kita step up capability mereka dalam jualan karena yang jualan kan bukan kita ke consumer kan tapi uh, beauty counselor gitu at the time and then uh, of course counter operation sama quality gitu gimana kita manage uh, our image gitu di toko itu gimana itu excellent lah kalau dilihat ke uh, luar gitu oke okay, next slide Ya, yeah, and then ini yang my last experience uh, sebelum aku took maternity leave waktu itu kita uh, aku handle mini market channel uh, one of the uh, one of the biggest uh, mini market retailer in Indonesia because you know mini market kan di mana mana ya kalian tahu kan mini market uh, itu setiap berapa meter itu ada <laughs> ada mini market gitu nah ini uh, you know those ya yeah, yang dua pemain yang besar lah I I handle one of the one of the big one jadi kalau ada dua ya aku yang satunya gitu nah uh, and then waktu nah experience nya apa sih yang beda of course it's very different from SK2 karena SK2 is a very prestige glamorous uh, product gitu kan konsumernya aja udah beda harganya aja udah beda gitu kan jadi uh, it's very different gitu nah di sini uh, goalnya tetap sama kita drive uh, total PNG brand sales tapi di sini yang aku manage portofolionya banyak banget gitu kalau tadi kan SK2 cuma satu brand gitu tapi yang di sini ada banyak semua barang PNG itu uh, aku yang handle gitu jadi Uh, I have another one in my team also uh, responsible uh, of specific category, tapi as a total aku manage uh, the whole PNG brand di uh, this account gitu. Jadi kita uh, hair care, terus home care, terus uh, gilet juga, terus oral care, skin care. Jadi itu uh, semua bedanya of course disitulah yang kita handle tuh lebih banyak produknya gitu kan. Terus yang kedua juga kita innovationnya of course lebih banyak kalau misalnya Tadi kan SK itu cuma satu, ya udah kalau dia ada innovation satu produk. Tapi kalau ini hair care, hair care aja ada tiga brand sendiri, ada Pantene, Rejoice, Head and Shoulders. Setiap brand itu beda-beda innovationnya, produk barunya beda-beda, iklannya beda-beda, uh, innovationnya beda-beda. Terus belum Gillette, Downy segala macam. Jadi kita yang lead innovation roadshow, uh, terus uh, apa? Terus kita secure juga uh, support from our retailer. And then di sini juga aku improve uh, stewardship. Jadi kita tetap harus uh, in control ya. Maksudnya stewardship tuh, uh, if you know, misalnya di audit gitu. Nah kita tetap harus uh, work with uh, good uh, good stewardship gitu. And then yang uh, kedua, uh, dua terakhir itu lebih ke financial. Jadi kita juga manage uh, financial metrics and account. Jadi misalnya uh, apa namanya collect um, collect money faster from the retailer. And then kita drive cost optimization juga. Nah, ini contoh-contohnya lah. This is uh, actually if you can see biasanya kalau di toko-toko minimarket kan ada promo-promo. Nah, ini yang tadi aku bilang aku drive uh, eksekusinya jalan di toko gitu kan, kepajang segala macam and then the promotion happen uh, dan lain-lain. Uh, that's basically our job lah. My job uh, waktu di account ini. Next slide please. Ya, yeah, mungkin ini just a bit about challenges. Tadi kan mungkin aku bahas sedikit mungkin challengesnya satu fast paced industry. Tadi uh, related to the first uh, yang culture tadi karena ini industrinya fast, jadi kita tetap harus agile. It's one of the challenges. Yang kedua, gimana caranya kita fine tuning goals sama internal sama external partners? Karena of course setiap orang setiap stakeholders kan um, tujuannya beda-beda gitu kan gimana cara kita bisa punya satu goal yang sama sama internal dan eksternal eksternal itu tadi bisa our customers our consumers segala macam gitu terus yang ketiga mungkin working with diverse team uh, karena uh, tadi kan diversity is a good thing tapi berarti dengan ada diversity kan isi kepalanya orang-orang beda-beda juga gitu gimana caranya kita bisa uh, work with a diverse team dan uh, kita bisa again mencapai goal yang sama gitu dengan uh, apa namanya orang-orangnya beda-beda gitu Next. Nah, itu ini juga beberapa udah dijelasin tadi yang Nadira juga perks of working in FMCG company ya just uh, apa namanya mungkin uh, cuman summarize aja again tadi flexible uh, I think a lot of FMCG company hampir semua kita flexible working hours and place uh, work from home is already a culture even before pandemic. Uh, and then tadi casual and fun working environment juga uh, of course number three kita punya direct access to leadership board karena Uh, apa namanya ya tadi karena ada straight talk kita bisa nyamperin VP kita kapanpun kita mau kita bisa 
talk to our directors kapanpun kita mau gitu. International exposure of course because we are a multinational company. Uh, lots of travels of course kalau misalnya training segala macam kita uh, banyak a lot of training so uh, help in uh, apa namanya enggak di Indonesia atau mungkin kita business travels gitu misalnya kita uh, domestic or even international gitu. and of course lots of freebies gitu. oke okay, next slide ya yeah, ini tadi mungkin just to summarize this is the mungkin suasananya lah biar kalian kebayang this is the working environment uh, apa namanya freebiesnya kayak apa nah itu uh, apa namanya this is just a glimpse of uh, apa namanya kira-kira snapshot of working in uh, PNG or in FMCG in general uh, last slide Ya, yeah, I think uh, last slide it's uh, karena ini kita uh, I don't know whether it's all women here but tapi in terms of uh, community uh, PNG also work very closely with our community uh, even with women community kita punya uh, apa namanya kita punya program uh, apa namanya kita punya program namanya Anjani kemarin itu kita uh, empowering women uh, and then kita bikin seminar, kita bikin workshop uh, untuk uh, membantu entrepreneur entrepreneur perempuan wanita uh, di Indonesia gitu. Jadi I think Uh, in terms of social responsibility, kita juga very close with uh, Indonesian community. Kita build houses, and then waktu itu um, untuk uh, kita waktu itu pernah ada uh, apa namanya uh, di Palu Donggala. So basically, our social uh, kalau kalian tertarik sama social uh, social work uh, itu is very it's it's a lot lah di PNG. Kalian bisa uh, benar-benar terjun langsung untuk membantu uh, community di Indonesia. I think that's all uh, from my presentation. Um, back to you, Kumaira. Okay, thank you so much, Kashero, for the very uh, insightful presentation. So, from what I can conclude from your presentation, Ka, we learned that diversity is number one, and working in PNG is a multifunction, uh, a lot of teamwork, straight talk, it is database, flexible and agile as well, and you have to be accountable. And, uh, For career in sales, it is both external and internal facing. And you also mentioned that the challenges you face in working in, in an FMCG company is that it is fast-paced. You have to fine-tune your goals between the internal and external partners and that um, you work with a very diverse team. So for the next session, we're going to have a Q&A session. And I will be reading some questions from both the type form and the Slido page. And the first question is uh, specifically for Kak Nadira. Um, Kak Nadira, somebody would like to know. Yes. Mm-hmm. Um, how semua jurusan bisa join FMCG? It means opportunity-nya sama. Jadi, skill apa yang bisa membedakan kita mm-hmm. untuk punya our own power dari uh, jurusan kita sendiri? Oke, okay, mungkin aku uh, cerita juga kali ya, kenapa kan aku tadi bilangnya semua jurusan bisa jadi skill apa sih jadi aku sambil cerita experience juga kan ya kalau aku di supply chain itu mostly emang aku mention kan sebelumnya mostly adalah anak-anaknya itu harusnya yang dapat ilmunya itu di industrial engineering ya kita di chemical engineering itu um, bahkan nggak ada sama sekali lah belajar tentang apa itu supply chain benar-benar totally different world gitu with supply chain Jadi dulu aku uh, lebih nyari tahu sih. Jadi sebelum aku applied for the position, sebelum aku applied for supply chain, aku cari tahu dulu uh, key job accountability-nya supply chain tuh apa sih? Terus skill specific skill-nya yang dimiliki apa gitu. Jadi kalau supply chain itu uh, mostly people work in supply chain itu comfortable to work with numbers, with Excel gitu. Jadi uh, before aku applied for internship di Unilever dulu, bahkan aku dulu Uh, cari-cari online course gitulah tentang uh, basic um, Excel gitu karena emang sebenarnya menurut aku Excel yang dipakai di kuliah sama di kerja itu totally different gitu jadi emang pas di kampus pun aku nggak banyak ya pakai Excel yang benar-benar kayak buat di kerja gitu jadi kayak pivot si lookup misal ya seperti itu itu di kampus tuh nggak nggak banyak pakai jadi dulu aku benar-benar juga tanya-tanya sih sama ke senior if if you have senior misalnya yang kamu kenal gitu Uh, misalnya working in specific division yang kamu mau coba tanya aja kira-kira skill set apa sih gitu contohnya kalau aku sih tadi kalau di supply chain sendiri itu uh, biasanya orangnya itu harus bisa work with numbers dan excel sih mostly jadi aku before aku apply aku um, cari online course yang free tuh banyak banget gitu misalnya kamu tertarik juga nih di marketing tapi background kamu misalnya kayak aku chemical engineering atau other engineering itu kamu tinggal cari aja misalnya di Udemy uh, atau platform-platform uh, free online course lainnya 
like uh, one-on-one marketing atau digital marketing gitu. Jadi kayak uh, kamu punya kayak semacam sertifikasi lah gitu. Jadi bisa, bisa kamu put di CV. Jadi even uh, your background is not from marketing misal atau fr- bukan from industrial engineering for supply chain karena kamu punya uh, like sertifikasi atau course itu yang kamu pegang itu bisa jadi bekal juga sih buat nantinya kamu apply gitu. Oke. Okay. Um, next question ini specifically untuk Kak Cheryl. Kak ada yang nanya, um, I heard you are a new mom now. My question is, when you are going back to work, how do you manage your time in family and career? Okay. Uh, uh, ya, yeah, jadi mungkin tadi aku share aku sekarang di umam kan dan uh, actually I'm now a full time mom karena belum masuk kerja. Jadi uh, next month uh, probably ya yeah, next month aku took karena aku took extended maternity leave kan 6 bulan uh, dan uh, mungkin aku share uh, probably not my personal experience tapi mungkin pers- apa experience uh, other uh, mom di PNG ya yang aku tahu gitu kan. Jadi Uh, of course, kalau di PNG tadi kita udah share kan, it's flexible gitu. Jadi kalau yang aku tahu, let's say sebelumnya bosku juga perempuan gitu, dia juga punya anak kan. Jadi uh, walk, dia sih cara jugglingnya adalah, uh, I, I think the the most important thing is we set expectation to our uh, team gitu. Uh, let's say misalnya what I'll do ketika I'll come back, jadi aku udah kepikiran gitu, I'll set expectation with my boss. So this is my working hours misalnya. Uh, so misalnya my working hours is 9 to 5 atau 9 to 6 gitu. Jadi I think the first one itu very important uh, setting expectation to everyone. Jadi ketika kamu udah masuk kerja semua tuh udah tahu gitu. Oke okay, karena aku new mom, jadi this is my working hours. Uh, apa namanya uh, apa kalau misalnya di luar itu mungkin aku nggak bisa diganggu kayak gitu sih. That's first. Uh, terus kalau mungkin experience from my uh, previous boss atau other moms di PNG itu cara mereka uh, juggling with uh, work in PNG also biasanya mereka leverage team. Karena tadi aku share kan kita uh, work tuh kita nggak sendirian lah kita multifunction teamwork gitu jadi it's very important to leverage your team member gitu ketika like, kamu nggak bisa atau misalnya kita lagi ada kebutuhan lagi ada uh, personal uh, personal matters gitu kan jadi uh, kita udah ngomong dari jauh-jauh hari dan kita leverage our team member gitu kita uh, sorry nih kita benar-benar nggak bisa di, di hari ini let's say jadi uh, I need to uh, apa namanya misalnya uh, take care buat satu isu atau satu meeting gitu. Jadi uh, itu sih yang aku uh, aku lihat sih dari uh, mom di PNG ya in general biasanya uh, banyak banget lah misalnya kayak sebelum kerja mereka drop anaknya dulu ke sekolah it's even uh, before the pandemic ya maksudnya kayak uh, sebelum ke kantor mereka biasanya nganterin anak dulu gitu. Terus atau kadang tengah-tengah kantor uh, lunch time mereka uh, jemput anak atau segala macam it's very uh, possible banget sih di uh, di FMCG company ya. I think it's not only in PNG tapi di other FMCG company I also see uh, banyak banget working moms yang they really can juggle between their family time sama working time juga gitu. Oke, okay. so the next question is for both Kak Cheryl and Kak Nadira. The question is, uh, what is the biggest uh, challenge you faced while working in FMCG company? And can you tell us about how you can overcome it? Mungkin um, siapa dulu yang mau jawab? Dari aku dulu ya. Aku uh. boleh. Oke. Okay. Oke, okay, mungkin biggest challenge-nya itu lebih ke yang tadi sih yang udah aku mention, itu harus working with uh, banyak kerja, lebih banyak kerja sama other division ya. Karena mungkin salah satu uniknya dari FMCG, kita harus benar-benar uh, kuat nih yang dari sisi collaboration-nya. Dulu waktu... Uh, mungkin background aku di engineering kayak dulu aku sebelum mas sebelum kenal ini liver dan l'oreal itu aku intern bahkan di oil and gas company kalau misalnya di oil and gas tuh dan engineering most of engineering company tuh biasanya mereka kerja di divisi sendiri-sendiri misalnya di oil and gas tuh bagian drilling bagian apa tuh benar-benar sendiri-sendiri gitu punya goalsnya masing-masing meanwhile kalau di fmcg itu uh, it's very different uh, environment lah gitu dari most of engineer engineering company gitu jadi benar-benar dilatih banget sih harus bisa lebih open minded sama bisa collaborationnya gitu jadi yang aku lakuin sih dulu uh, yang tadi aku pernah mention juga jadi uh, harus bisa be a good listener uh, absorb everything jangan malu untuk bertanya gitu even even tuh kayak kita masih baru nih jangan jangan malu untuk bertanya ke teman-teman dari divisi lain jangan cuma kayak mainnya cuman saya aku supply chain cuma di supply chain aja nggak boleh kayak gitu jadi lebih kayak 
uh, banyak dengerin uh, apa sih uh, insight dari divisi lain gitu. Jadi kalau misalnya kerja di FMCG kita harus bisa tahu uh, keadaan dari the whole company gitu. Jadi kayak jadi misalnya aku anak supply chain nih nggak uh, cuma tahu tentang bagian delivery atau produksi aja, harus tahu juga insight dari market apa sih sekarang produk yang lagi bagus, yang market share bagus apa sih uh, brand apa gitu. Terus uh, channel apa sih yang salesnya paling bagus gitu. Jadi itu insight-insight yang bisa kita absorb juga gitu untuk bisa kerja bareng dan collaboratively secara bagus dengan other division. Gitu. Itu sih kalau dari aku. Oke, okay. uh, kalau aku mungkin biggest challenge um, waktu awal-awal mungkin kalau misalnya di FMCG uh, apa namanya satu kan itu very fast paced kan, uh, terus problems tuh datangnya nggak nunggu-nunggu gitu. Misalnya yang satu belum selesai itu udah datang lagi problem lain gitu. Jadi uh, mungkin itu challenge ya waktu aku pertama kali masuk aku shock aja kayak lah problemnya banyak banget nggak selesai-selesai gitu. Uh, itu terus uh, dan kalian tuh bener di uh, apa namanya every individual itu bener-bener di expect untuk uh, apa namanya di expect untuk bisa accountable uh, uh, accountable atas problemnya masing-masing maksudnya gini uh, apa namanya ketika waktu itu aku let's say masih baru kan junior gitu baru masuk tapi uh, aku punya problem yang misalnya problemnya ini benar-benar sampai top level tuh tahu gitu problem aku gitu nah itu uh, aku waktu itu kan sebagai anak bawang gitu kayaknya masa gue sih yang ngasih proposalnya nanti uh, solutionnya kayak gimana segala macam itu aku lumayan struggle sih waktu itu, karena waktu itu kebetulan bosku juga lagi vakan gitu, waktu itu lagi gak ada bos, jadi I report directly to two up level gitu, jadi let's say satu, uh, misalnya satu kan manager, nah ini aku uh, report ke atasnya lagi gitu, karena waktu itu lagi vakan, nah itu bener-bener waktu itu very challenging, karena satu, aku nggak pede kan, karena masa sih dia percaya gitu kan, aku anak baru masuk, tapi udah handle uh, this kind of uh, very big problem gitu, jadi, Uh, it's very challenging at the time, terus meeting ke uh, director level, ke VP level, even ke director board, dengerin anak bawah ngomong gitu, itu it's a very challenging time for me gitu, tapi yang waktu itu akhirnya aku overcome adalah uh, gimana caranya, ya waktu itu bener-bener tanya sih, jangan malu banget tanya, karena kadang-kadang kita agak segen kan nanya gitu, tapi ternyata ketika kita tanya, dan even orang kita nggak usah nanya sebenarnya mau bantuin gitu, jadi yang those seniors tuh bener-bener ya mereka aware juga, oh lagi punya isu, And it's very helpful gitu ketika kita uh, apa namanya minta uh, apa point of view mereka gitu kan even though mereka nggak work di our problems ya maksudnya mereka nggak berhubungan gitu unrelated tapi mereka bisa kasih kita software experience juga mereka bisa kasih a very different point of view gitu kan yang kita nggak kepikiran gitu jadi uh, waktu itu juga ya itu pelajaranku adalah benar reach out to many uh, people lah as possible gitu jadi dari even director level atau yang peers yang enggak berhubungan sama sekali tapi Uh, karena everyone in FMCG company itu very helpful pasti mereka mau bantuin dan and all of them have di- very different uh, experience different background juga gitu itu uh, Oke okay. um, next question for both of you again um, how do you maintain your work performance amid the strict competition especially uh, by the youngers Nadira dulu, jangan apa aku dulu. Boleh, Kak Jaram dulu. Oke, okay, oke. Okay. Jadi gimana gimana competition? Gimana uh, kakak bisa maintain performance, performance. kakak? Iya, yeah, in the middle of competition, apalagi mungkin dari new recruits yang lebih muda gitu. Jadi, Kak Jaram. Yeah. Uh, I think di FMCG company ya, aku nggak tahu sih, mungkin nanti Nadira bisa share, tapi uh, for uh, di my specific company itu kita, Uh, culture-nya adalah promote from within gitu. Promote from within itu artinya uh, bukan, let's say, promote from within mean kita benar-benar promoting orang-orang yang ibaratnya dari nol lah di, di situ gitu. Jadi nggak tiba-tiba kamu udah kerja keras, susah-susah, tiba-tiba nanti yang jadi bos kamu uh, uh, strangers gitu kan, dari PNG juga misalnya. Nah, itu. Jadi kita benar-benar culture uh, promote from within gitu. Jadi uh, what I do to maintain uh, my work performance, uh, sebenarnya itu kalau di, P- di FMCG, I don't know ya in general, tapi in PNG, uh, itu sebenarnya nggak cuma performance yang dilihat. Jadi uh, jadi biasanya ibaratnya kalau orang cepat promote itu nggak necessarily it's only about performance gitu. Jadi it's also about your image gitu kan. Jadi kamu boleh perform, tapi kamu kelihatan nggak perform. Bisa jadi kamu perform, tapi nggak ada yang tahu kamu perform gitu. Board director level nggak tahu kamu perform. So it's very important to maintain your image dan exposure juga gitu. Jadi uh, apa namanya, dan of course your attitude gitu. Jadi 
bisa jadi kalau kamu emang perform tapi kamu sendiri nggak bisa working with teams kamu nggak ada attitude gitu kan itu juga nggak belum tentu kamu bisa promote cepat gitu jadi uh, of course what I do ya itu tadi aku just maintain of course my performance my exposure uh, ensure everyone knows about my performance yang enggak everyone lah your yang yang penting-penting aja lah bukan pamer ya maksudnya bukan satu company harus tahu kamu tuh kok keren banget nih hasil kerja gue enggak tapi maksudnya uh, your uh, apa namanya key person yang uh, responsible for your career itu uh, their Uh, apa namanya ensure dia tuh fully aware on your performance gitu ya image juga sama gitu uh, maintain your image basically kalau kamu udah tadi uh, exposure bagus pasti image kamu bagus juga gitu on the uh, competition yang recruit to be honest sebenarnya aku nggak merasa mereka competition sih again tadi uh, karena culturenya I think di FMCG itu learning sih learning company jadi benar-benar semua itu ya ya dianggapnya sama gitu mau kamu baru masuk mau kamu udah senior bahkan sangat biasa di di uh, FMCG itu uh, di uh, spesifik di my company sering banget yang lebih muda itu promote duluan daripada yang lebih senior dan itu enggak ada no hard feelings benar-benar sama sekali enggak ada gitu jadi uh, I think I aku nggak pernah ngerasa younger recruit says my competition gitu karena we all uh, work uh, the same semuanya expectationnya sama whether you're new in the company or you're uh, longer in the company Oke, okay, kalau dari Kanadira gimana, Kak? Oke, okay. nah. okay, sebenarnya kurang lebih uh, sama sih, sama yang uh, Kak Sheryl udah share juga, kurang lebih uh, culture-nya itu sama, cuma mungkin uh, aku bisa sharing juga kan, karena aku background-nya dari, dari MT program ya, di MT itu aku waktu itu satu tahun dikasih project, dan project-nya itu uh, spesifik lah buat aku untuk improve something gitu. Jadi emang... ada resultnya dan resultnya tuh kelihatan gitu oleh semua orang oh uh, anak MT ini berhasil nih achieve ABC gitu karena emang anak MT kan di expect untuk dikasih project membawa perubahan dan ada resultnya tuh yang uh, tangible gitu yang kelihatan for the company nah after graduation ini after graduate from MT ini yang sebenarnya menurut aku malah lebih challenging gitu karena kamu itu udah nggak diswa nggak dikasih lagi tuh project kamu harus benar-benar handle something Dan kamu harus malah create sendiri improvement apa yang mau kamu bawa nih uh, di specific role kamu gitu, project apa gitu itu kamu malah harus cari sendiri gitu. Gimana caranya? Benar kata kata Kasirul tadi, uh, kamu perform bagus tapi kamu nggak speak up, semua orang nggak tahu tentang kerjaan kamu itu uh, cukup percuma gitu. Jadi bukan mau sombong juga tapi kamu juga harus uh, lebih kayak apa ya? Uh, yang bos aku juga selalu ngomong sih, jangan terlalu diam gitu. Misalnya kamu perform tapi orang-orang nggak tahu. Proyek apa yang kamu kerjain, uh, kamu udah achieve apa di role kamu itu uh, sama aja gitu. Jadi sering-sering lah share gitu uh, ke atasan kamu atau related division kamu apa aja sih uh, result dari proyek kamu yang kamu lagi handle gitu. Dan uh, itu sih sebenarnya yang bisa jadi menjadikan kamu itu lebih dari orang-orang lain. Gitu. Dan untuk competition juga um, sama sih sebenarnya kalau di FMCG itu bisa jadi juga yang lebih Dulu, uh, lebih bawah misalnya kayak lebih aku udah dua tahun misalnya ada yang baru direkrut itu misalnya akan dipromot duluan itu kayak possible aja dan itu udah sangat-sangat biasa gitu sebenarnya uh, di FMCG mungkin emang culture-nya gitu ya jadi benar-benar dilihat dari performance juga enggak enggak yang kayak oh udah lima tahun sepuluh tahun kerja jadi harus dipromot itu enggak sih jadi emang lebih ke arah tadi sih pertama performance kamu habis itu itu tuh gimana dan uh, gimana orang memandang kamu dan lebih ke 360 degree uh, feedback ya dari semua orang nggak cuma dari bos kamu dari peers kamu misalnya kamu punya bawahan nantinya itu sih gitu itu uh, itu juga important things juga jadi kita harus maintain good uh, 360 uh, feedback from others gitu oke okay. um, next mungkin ini pertanyaan yang terakhir ya kak buat Asia again um, maybe Um, enak uh, jawaban pendek aja ada yang mau tahu sebenarnya ada nggak sih karakteristik employee yang sebenarnya uh, seorang eh sebuah FMCG company itu perlu mungkin dari Kanadira duluan karakteristiknya kira-kira apa kak um, mungkin kayak resilience gitu ya kayak um... Someone, karena kan aku udah udah mention juga tadi ya, kalau FMCG company itu very agile, very innovative, jadi kita harus fast pace banget, jadi kita harus um, lebih, uh, apalah, kayak lebih tahan gitu lebih lebih tahan dengan semua perubahan gitu, lebih lebih tahan dengan semua perubahan, bisa 
bisa nggak uh, nggak misalnya dengan ada perubahan sedikit terus misalnya langsung takut atau misalnya langsung menyerah itu sangat sangat uh, apa ya bukan orang yang dicari di suatu FMCG company gitu jadi kamu harus bisa adaptable dan emang kayak kuat dengan semua uh, challenge dan perubahan yang ada di FMCG karena challenge yang kamu hadapi saat ini dan besok dan kayak dua minggu lagi itu bisa berubah dan bisa beda-beda dan gak akan selesai gitu jadi nggak ada yang namanya oke okay, kerjaan udah selesai itu nggak ada karena challenge-nya selalu muncul jadi itu sih paling uh, harus bisa resilient adaptability-nya harus oke okay, gitu oke okay, mungkin kalau dari aku karakteristik apa ya mungkin number one uh, ini sih mungkin leadership skill ya misalnya kayak kok kita di di kampus kan juga banyak banget organisasi segala macam. I think uh, satu yang penting juga your leadership skill sih karena uh, leadership skill tuh doesn't mean kamu harus jadi leader gitu kan. Tapi in every everything you do gitu kan di yang kayak tadi Musa Nadira udah share uh, everyone kamu di role kamu itu di expect something kan. Jadi and also kamu tuh harus you need to be accountable for your own work gitu. Jadi even kamu nggak punya bawahan you also need to have the leadership skill gimana caranya kamu bisa ngelit your project gitu kan. Karena itu ibaratnya kan kerjaan kamu. Everyone will not uh, apa namanya orang lain tuh nggak akan nggak akan ngulak-ngulik lah kerjaan kamu gitu. Kamu yang emang responsible for your own work gitu. Ketika ada problem uh, you're the go to person gitu orang akan nanya kamu so i think that's first gitu yang uh, leadership yang kedua uh, uh, ini sih critical thinking ya jadi uh, mungkin critical thinking very uh, important juga gitu di FMCG industry uh, tadi kan kita harus agile segala macam uh, problems tuh banyak banget gitu uh, kalau kita nggak kritis gitu kan kalau cuman aduh ada problem ya aduh gimana ya gitu tapi itu benar-benar ibaratnya kita harus go to the roots of it gitu ini problemnya kenapa sih apakah karena a b c so it's very important skill juga sih uh, critical thinking uh, apa namanya di FMCG industry yang ketiga mungkin yang tadi aku udah share culture uh, straight talk tadi sih jadi kita harus uh, a voice kita harus berani nyuarain voice kita gitu jadi harus vokal lah ibaratnya kalau di FMCG itu uh, agak susah sih kalau cuman yang diem diem uh, alon alon kelapot gitu itu agak susah ya kayak ya udah diem aja deh kerjain diri share juga kan even kalau kamu perform harus ngomong harus share gitu tapi kalau misalnya kita diem diem nggak ada yang tahu jadi I think tadi sih yang ketiga uh, speak up tuh skill yang benar-benar penting lah kita harus uh, benar-benar bisa voice voice uh, voice out our opinion our work dan uh, semuanya sih gitu jadi itu I think those three skills yang uh, dibutuhkan untuk di FMCG industry Oke, okay, thank you so much Kak Cheryl um, Tapi aku mau minta maaf dulu ya Kalau misalkan berisik Karena dekat rumah aku ada azan um, Oke, okay, so that question marks The end of the first session Once again, I would like to give thanks To Kak Nadira and Kak Cheryl For the insight And to make time to share their experience For us in the middle of their busy schedule Now, let us move on to the second session And for Kak Nadira and Kak Cheryl You are welcome if you wish to stay And if you uh, wish to leave, you are welcome as well um, Once again, thank you so much ya, Kak, For your um, insight Thank you, Humaita. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome, Kak. For our second session, we will delve into the world of management trainee with a little help from our wonderful speakers, Kak Rini Sumawijaya and Kak Zikra Madina. I would also like to remind you the previous rules. So if you have questions, Please head over to our Slido page and don't forget to mute, to mute your microphone throughout this session. And like the previous session, each speaker will have 20 minutes to present. And uh, afterwards, we will move on to our Q&A session for 20 minutes as well. Okay, so without further ado, let's welcome our first speaker. For our second session, Kak Rini Sumawijaya. She is currently a manufacturing controller supervisor at Danone. And she is an alumna of the Economics and Business Faculty, batch 2015. Kak Rini, the time and floor is yours. Okay. Uh, thank you, Humayra. Can you all hear me? Yes. Uh, okay. Uh, hello, everybody. Thank you for having me in today's session. And thank you. OE Women in Business for arranging this webinar. Uh, hello, uh, Kak Zikra, Nadira, and Kak Seril. It's nice to see you all through the Zoom call. Um, I hope that you are all well and healthy in these tough times. 
uh, before I start, uh, could you please go to the next slide? Next. Okay, uh, so before I start, please let me introduce myself. My name is Rini. I graduated from UI uh, as an accounting student at FAB UI Batch 2015 through the IUPWU program. So I spent two years in UI and another two years in Melbourne Uni where I majored in both accounting and finance. So as mentioned before by Humaira, I currently work in Danone as a manufacturing controller supervisor. And I started my career there as a finance management trainee. Uh, before I graduated, I also did a couple of internships at EY as a risk advisory intern, uh, where I took part in a system implementation project for the biggest bank in Indonesia, and also at the United Nations Development Program as an intern in the Finance and Resources Management Unit. And currently, uh, with my friends, I'm building a community-based nonprofit organization for career development on women in Indonesia. Um, which is the Her Indonesia. Um, next slide, please. Okay, so for the, today's presentation agenda, I'll start well, with a brief of explanation about what MT program is, and followed with sharing you a glimpse of insight of what it's like to be an MT through my journey and experiences, and also a tips and tricks on how to land a job as an MT and excel in the program as well. Next slide, please. Okay, so first things first, before I try to explain to you what MT program is, um, I would like to let you know that every company has different programs. So what I'm explaining here might be different from the other companies. So MT program is a program that is designed to shape young talents in Indonesia to be the future leader of the company. Um, and through, it usually takes two to three years. And throughout those years, the MT will be rotated into different roles and projects within their division of choice. So for example, as a finance MT, I will be rotated uh, between the finance commercial, finance operations, finance supply chain, business process improvement, and also financial planning and analysis. And throughout the years, there will be mentors and coaches assigned to help, to help us. So mentors, usually they're the uh, directors within the division who will help us and guide us in building our career. So they will give us advices on which steps to take and which skills that we need to, to improve and what um, trainings that we need to get. But meanwhile, uh, coach are the ones that will help us in our projects and day-to-day -day activities. So for three years, um, we only have one mentor, but we could have different uh, coaches depending on our project. Um, in Danone itself, the program is three years, where the first year we'll, we will be uh, assigned as a contract employee. And every six months, we have a performance review where uh, we will share our progress, our development, and everything else. And there will be uh, numbers of panelists, which are usually the vice president of the division, the directors, uh, the HR, and also our coach. And usually this is very crucial because it will determine uh, whether or not we will be able to stay in the program. And when we have graduated, and we have successfully graduated the uh, first year of our MT program, um, we will we'll be uh, assigned as a permanent employee. And uh, for the first semester, in, uh, in Danone's case, we will be assigned to a cross-function assignment. So for me currently, I'm assigned to the engineering and technovation department, which is under the operation division. And the other two uh, of my peers in finance, um, one of them is assigned to the marketing division and the other one is assigned to the supply chain division. So it is hoped that um, after our cross-function assignment, we could get, get insights that will be very useful for um, our uh, decision-making in the upcoming future. And after that, we will be assigned to our first permanent role, 
um, as an MP. So for me, it will be around January 2021. Next slide, please. Okay, so why should you become an MP? Okay, maybe I'll try to share with you my point of view on the benefits of being an MP, at least based on my experience, yeah. Because I know that different people have different point of views and also different journey experiences with their MP programs. So um, I think starting your career as an MP has lots of benefits, both in terms of improving your technical skills and also your soft skills. First things first, uh, it goes without saying that by being uh, in the MP program, you are uh, exposed to various departments, both within your division or outside your division, because you will be assigned to various numbers of projects. And this will shape your agility and your way of thinking and opens us up to various opportunities in the upcoming future. And you will also uh, do projects that are impactful to the business this early in your career. So you will have a very steep learning curve. In addition to that, you will be exposed to the company's leaders because in my experience, uh, every month we get to have lunch meetings with the vice president, not only from our uh, division, but also from the other division as well. And then uh, we also get to be uh, invited to events that are usually only attended by the leaders. So in Danon, there's this event called the Danon Leaders Day. Uh, usually, uh, there, this event is attended by um, managers up to the CEO level. And since we're assumed to be the future leader of the company, we get to be invited to the event as well. As for the soft skills, uh, we get to be able to learn about how to manage our time better, um, uh, leadership skills, building our relationship with stakeholders, and learn to see things in a helicopter view or a 360 degree views, and all of which are the qualities that are very much needed in a leader. Next, please. Okay, so what it's like to be an MP. Um, as I mentioned, uh, everyone has different experiences in their MP journey. So for me, on my first semester, I was appointed as the financial advisor for a groundbreaking project in Dandon. And here I got to collaborate with sales and supply chain division. So I was appointed as a person who determines whether or not the groundbreaking project will benefit the company uh, and our distributor, both in the short term and long term uh, period by considering both uh, potential sales and costs that might occur when we go for that project. Uh, and then I, on that semester as well, I was also assigned to help sales division in assisting a uh, growing Danone's distributor through a template that I created. And with that, it opens me up to another opportunity that is outside of my assigned project. So um, the directors in sales division asked me to provide training using my template to the managers in, in the sales division. And as for my second semester, I was very humbled to be appointed as the project leader for one of the biggest digitization project in the finance division. Here, I got to learn so much about Danone's business process, not only about the finance commercial, but also the operations, supply chain, and things like that. Um, uh, as I mentioned before, currently I'm on a cross-function assignment to the engineering and technovation department. And as you can see on the pictures as well, aside from being appointed and assigned to a project, as an MP, we get to be a part of a committee for events in Danone as well. So like in this first picture, I was a part of the main event committee for our rapat kerja in Jogja. And then I got to perform in front of the leaders along with uh, my fellow MP peers. And here, uh, I got to be a part of the committee on our Aqua Day. Okay, uh, next, please. Okay, uh, so now uh, the main question is how to become an MP. So this is uh, the recruitment process. I know that each year the recruitment process is different and every company has different recruitment process as well. Uh, before I go further, mungkin aku mau share dulu kali ya kalau 
uh, you can apply to divisions yang enggak sesuai dengan uh, background kuliah kamu. Misalnya kayak aku kebetulan karena emang backgroundnya finance, terus apply-nya ke finance. Tapi ada juga temanku yang dia backgroundnya dulu di chemical engineering, tapi dia a finance MD juga. So, um, they believe that you are more than just your background gitu. Jadi yang they don't and they don't really see uh, kamu sekolahnya di mana dan lain-lain. Yang penting lebih ke whether or not you have a curiosity and willingness to learn and become a leader. Nah, oke. Okay. Sekarang aku coba jelasin recruitment prosesnya ya. Uh, up here aku coba juga coba kasih timeline ya pas aku recruitment process. So, uh, you get to um, imagine uh, how long it takes dari pertama kali aku apply sampai dapat offer-nya. Tapi kebetulan aku lupa aku submit application-nya tanggal berapa. Um, Oke, okay. nah jadi after we submit our application, we will be invited to the online assessment. Nah, in this step, they want to know your way of thinking sama your personality as well. Jadi ada juga beberapa company yang ada video interview juga di situ. Nah, afterwards, after we pass the online assessment, we will be invited to the HR interview. Um, di sini, Do you really want to know okay, how well you communicate with others and then whether or not you have a positive attitude and why you want to work in the company? Mungkin tips dari aku untuk ini, di steps ini kalau kamu ditanya, why do you want to work in here? Uh, jangan cuma bilang kayak kamu pengen kerja di multinational company because so many people answer-nya kayak gitu kan. Jadi um, coba share Uh, lebih ke how you how the values and uh, visions and missions of the company resonates with you gitu. Kayak waktu itu um, in my case aku waktu itu bilang how I appreciate that Danone doesn't only care about the profit that they get but also about their impact to the environment and also and their consumers and their consumers juga. Oke. Okay. Terus uh, the next step itu LGD atau ada beberapa juga company yang pakai FGD atau focus group discussion. Nah, in my case, kebetulan waktu itu aku nggak bisa ikut the step of recruitment karena pas lagi recruitment prosesnya, aku masih di Melbourne. Jadi, it was kind of impossible for me to get back. Um, tapi waktu itu, I had a one-on-one -on -one session with uh, one of the HR MPs. And they told me that in order for us to be successful successful in the step, mungkin kayak you gotta make sure that you can build uh, the discussion You can speak your and voice your opinion in a polite way, tapi at the same time, kamu let others uh, get their chance to talk juga. Jadi jangan kayak kamu pengen um, shine sendiri di situ. Nah, terus on to the user and final interview. User interview itu biasanya di, kita diinterview sama uh, directors of the division-nya. Dan final interview biasanya sama vice president-nya. Jadi in my case yang user interview itu finance directors dan kalau final interview itu sama CFO-nya. Nah, um, di sini uh, lebih ke technical technicalities-nya sih. Jadi uh, aside from showing your positive attitude karena uh, your positive attitude can goes a long way banget and show that you also understand your job desk uh, the job desk that you're applying for terus juga job desk kamu pas kamu lagi internship waktu itu and your previous working experiences uh, and show what impact that you made gitu. Jadi terus and do ask questions when it's time for you to ask question karena it shows that you're interested to learn about the role and be a part of their team as well. Nah, um, next please. Okay. Nah, after you uh, are accepted, your journey itu enggak it doesn't stop there. Karena you gotta make sure that you will graduate from the uh, program and be accepted as a permanent employee, kan? Nah, jadi I think the most important thing is you have to understand your assignment and scope of work. And you need to be curious and learn as much as you can Well, whenever you are assigned to a certain project or role. So if you if you can, you, ha you, you have to do something beyond what you're assigned for, gitu. So di situ kamu show that you are you really are willing to learn um, in your assigned role. Gitu. Terus um, building a relationship with your stakeholder atau tim itu juga very important karena kita nggak mungkin kan do our projects by ourselves. Pastinya kita butuh bantuan orang lain. Um, mungkin tips dari aku untuk ini uh, try to build an informal conversation gitu. Karena it's very simple tapi 
uh, as I as I said, it can get uh, it can uh, get you to places lah gitu. Jadi mungkin when you invite someone to a meeting uh, and before we we start the meeting, mungkin bisa um, try to make small conversations, how uh, ask about how they're doing. Terus kalau kamu tahu misalnya dia punya anak, terus anaknya sekolah di Uh, mana kamu nanya apa kabar anaknya bu apa kabar anaknya apa gitu it's very simple tapi kayak uh, like I said it can go long way terus um, as as mentioned juga sama kakak-kakak sebelumnya we need to be agile and we need to be able to learn from our mistakes karena tentunya kita pasti bound to make mistakes kan and know that it's okay to make mistake and what happens what what matters is Uh, how fast uh, you bounce back from those mistakes and um, show that kamu to learn from those mistakes you get. And we need to learn to see things in a 360 degree point of view and always think critically. Gitu. Um, then tentunya, when we face problems and challenges, which we most likely will, itu we need to speak up and communicate those issues with our mentors and coaches. Um, in terms of this, ini emang sih banyak orang yang kayak takut dikira ntar nggak kompeten atau nggak ngerti proyeknya kayak gimana. Tapi it's okay, don't be afraid. Mereka nggak bakal mikir itu. Justru they will appreciate uh, that that you are willing to speak up to them because project yang diassign ke kita, as I mentioned, biasanya kan impactful. Um, the project is bigger than us gitu, and we need to know that. Jadi kalau ada problems, it's okay just communicate it to them. Tapi at the same time jangan juga kamu pasrah gitu. Kalau kamu ada problem jangan cuman kayak, "Bu, Pak, saya ada problem nih, gimana ya?" Jangan kayak gitu. Tapi kalau bisa kamu lebih ke, "Bu, Pak, saya punya problem ini. Menurut saya solution yang tepat adalah seperti ini." Nah, gimana menurut Bapak dan Ibu? Jadi try to come to them dengan solution yang menurut kamu terbaik. Tapi kalau mereka punya point of view lain, ya coba diterima and maybe go from there as well. Dan tentunya consult your aspirations juga ke coach sama mentors kamu, karena it's very important because uh, kan ini kita yang mau build karir kita kayak gimana. Jadi kalau mereka nggak tahu aspirasi kita maunya apa, bisa aja mereka nge-assign kita ke project atau role yang kita nggak ada interest sama sekali nih. Dan ini juga bisa aja um, jadi penghalang ke kita excelling in our uh, apa namanya in our project. Gitu. Jadi it's important for you to consult your aspirations as well. Okay, uh, I think that's all from me. Mungkin uh, last reminder aja, like I've said before, when you apply, uh, just and um, accept it to the program. Always be prepared, uh, be confident, and remember that you are more than just your background. Gitu. It doesn't matter where you are from, whether, whether or not kita kerja sesuai dengan major yang kita punya dulu atau enggak, yang penting kita willing to learn. Next all, okay, thank you and good luck. for the entire presentation. So from what I can conclude from the presentation, uh, every company has different uh, MG program. And as an MG, uh, you put emphasis on a steep learning curve. And you also gain a lot of soft skills such as time management, leadership skills, political thinking. And your MG journey is a good setup also a financial advisor. And now you are working in a cross-function economy between engineering and Yes. You put emphasis on being prepared, uh, being confident, and to remember that we are more than our background. Thank you so much, Karini. Mm-hmm. Um, next, we are going to continue with our second speaker. Let's welcome Ka Zikra Madina. She is currently the head of HR for customer development at Unilever. And she is an alumna of the Faculty of Psychology, Batch 2005. Kak Zikra, the time and floor is yours. Okay, selamat sore. Uh, thank you, Humaira, for allowing me to be here. And also, teman-teman dari Universitas Indonesia Women in Business. So, uh, first of all, I would like to thank you guys, uh, UI, the Women in Business team, to actually create this event. Um, sorry, let me... Open my camera first. <laughs> Oke, okay, so um, kelihatan kan ya sekarang. Oke, okay. so uh, yeah, so thank you teman-teman semua sudah bikin acara ini gitu ya karena um, and you are not only opening this event today untuk para perempuan, tapi actually you're inviting the brothers to actually join juga gitu ya. So 
uh, I hope that um, teman-teman semua di sini nanti bisa uh, berdasarkan penjelasan dari empat dari kita berempat itu bisa uh, lebih dapat gambaran kayak gimana sih karir di FMCG gitu. Nah sebelum aku mulai, uh, I would like to introduce myself first. Uh, namaku Zikra Magina atau you can just call me Z. Um, saat ini aku adalah Head of HR untuk Customer Development di Unilever. Jadi what is Customer Development? Kal, uh, umumnya dibilangnya sales, tapi in Unilever we believe that uh, our role is more than just selling products, but we are also developing our partners in the sales uh, um, value chain to actually develop their business. gitu jadi grow, uh, developingnya nggak cuma Unilever aja tapi juga our, uh, untuk bisnis partnersnya Unilever sendiri gitu ya. Nah um, at work uh, I've been with Unilever for 8 tahun so I joined uh, the company in 2012 sebagai recruiter so my whole career dari aku lulus di dari uh, Fakultas Psikologi UI pas S1 tahun 2009 aku join aku lulus 2009 so Um, I immediately jump into career in HR. I've worked in uh, several other company dari industri yang berbeda-beda, mulai dari telco, mulai dari um, pernah juga di management consulting gitu ya. Uh, kalau misalnya tadi Rini bilang Rini intern di EY, aku work in EY. Enggak uh, pernah ketemu sama Rini actually, but uh, aku work di EY as an HR business partner untuk assurance uh, division at that time. dan juga sempat juga untuk uh, consulting ataupun advisory-nya gitu. Nah, two years there in the uh, in the management consultant, aku akhirnya move to Unilever. I started my career as a recruiter, um, a very straightforward role for an a, a psychology graduate at that time. Uh, but I built my career internally. I'm, I did and kalau teman-teman dengar mungkin I did not join as management trainee at that time. However, currently in my current role, aku juga bertanggung jawab sebagai Uh, corporate lead untuk talent and performance di mana program management trainee Unilever itu adalah scope of my uh, responsibility. Jadi if you ever heard of Unilever Future Leaders Program atau biasa kita nyebut sebagai UFLP, it's uh, part of my scope of responsibility sehingga uh, um, hope hopefully nanti sharing aku ke sini uh, memberikan perspektif yang berbeda dari tiga speakers yang lainnya. If they share their experience as an employee, I will share my view as an HR practitioner orang-orang yang merekrut para um, para future leaders ini ya para talent-talent yang ada di luar sana ke dalam company apa sih sebenarnya that we are looking for gitu. Personally uh, I'm a wife, I'm a, um, a mother of two babies, uh, young boys. Jadi aku udah punya dua anak, uh, dua, uh, yang satu umurnya hampir 3 tahun, yang satu lagi almost one year old. Uh, jadi working from home selama pandemi ini and Unilever masih working from home sampai dengan saat ini kalau tim HO itu belum pernah masuk sama sekali not even bagi tugas ataupun bagi shift atau segala macam belum ada and working at home uh, with two young babies itu lumayan something gitu ya uh, so um, allow me to share my story juga let's go into the next slide lagi, satu lagi Nah, aku akan mulai untuk share sedikit mengenai Unilever. Uh, itu apa, apa sih sebenarnya gitu ya. Probably you know us more uh, from our brands rather than us as a company namanya Unilever. Karena di iklan-iklan Unilever sendiri, if you look at the prime time uh, advertisement, misalnya di TV ataupun di YouTube, lagi nonton YouTube terus ada ads-nya gitu kan ya. Logonya Unilever tuh selalu hanya kecil di ujung kanan layar saat iklan itu terakhir uh, selesai gitu. Tapi you probably know us by our brands. But globally, Unilever as a company itu um, has been in the uh, in the world itu lebih dari 90 tahun. Jadi udah lebih dari 90 tahun. Lalu uh, di Indonesia sendiri uh, kita sudah uh, tang- nanti tanggal 5 Desember we've been in Indonesia for 87 years. Kita uh, berdiri tahun 1933 di Indonesia. Dan saat ini secara Unilever sendiri itu ada di global kan. Hampir seluruh dunia yang ada di uh, dunia itu ada Unilever di negara tersebut and Indonesia sendiri sebagai operating country adalah nom- uh, terbesar nomor 4 di seluruh dunia. Gitu. Jadi our positions as a uh, significant part of Unilever global business itu ada di Indonesia gitu. Nah, uh, if you go to the next slide. 
Oke, okay, nah ini sedikit sneak peek uh, brand-brand yang kita punya di uh, Unilever. Jadi kita uh, mungkin teman-teman um, familiar dengan brand tadi aku bilang kan di kalau misalnya tahu Unilever mungkin tahunya lebih tahu brand kita gitu. Jadi uh, in, di, di Indonesia sendiri we believe that every household itu punya setidaknya satu Unilever products di rumahnya mereka. Apapun itu terbagi dari macam-macam division and categories-nya kita gitu ya. Lokalnya di Indonesia saat ini kita memiliki 42 brand. Eh, tahun ini nambah banyak karena inovasi kita selama pandemi ini luar biasa. Uh, but uh, currently we have 42-43 brands if I'm mistaken across uh, terbagi uh, ke dalam tiga big division atau big, tiga kategori besar. Uh, tiga kategori besar itu apa aja? Boleh ke next slide. Kategori kita itu ada tiga uh, yang besarnya pertama adalah beauty and personal care. Lalu ada food and refreshment dan juga ada home care. Ini adalah uh, Kontribusi dari masing-masing kategori ini secara global gitu ya. Memang yang paling besar bisnis Unilever Indonesia Unilever sendiri itu adalah di beauty and personal care. Sama juga di Indonesia. Tapi kalau di Indonesia BPC itu actually the contribution is around 50% of total. Food and refreshment itu sekitar 30%. Lalu home care bisnis kita contribute around 20%. Jadi more or less similar walaupun slightly bigger in the BPC kalau di Indonesia compared to uh, Unilever globally gitu ya. Oke, okay, uh, on to the next slide. Nah, ini tadi aku udah share mengenai uh, sneak peek mengenai Unilever. Nah, sekarang aku mau share ke teman-teman dari matanya seorang HR practitioner ya. Uh, apa sih yang kira-kira menurut kami akan membuat Uh, teman-teman yang akan bergabung ke perusahaan F- ke FMCG itu bisa sukses gitu kalau misalnya memang ber- memilih berkarir di uh, FMCG industri. Nah di sini aku punya lima nanti aku akan jelasin satu-satu mulai dari yang paling kiri dulu um, be purposeful. Jadi I think for you to uh, for someone to be successful in FMCG itu pertama adalah you have to know your purpose. Purpose itu apa sih? Uh, teman-teman bisa bayangkan ataupun mengandaikan itu sebagai kompasnya teman-teman. Apa sih yang menjadi acuan dan landasannya teman-teman personally gitu. Know your true north kita bilang. Jadi kompasnya itu apa? Apa sih yang important for uh, to you? Uh, what is actually driving you when everything seems like uh, going uh, so wrong? Apa yang membuat teman-teman feels like oh this is the reason of my being gitu. Apa sih yang sebenarnya uh, penting buat aku? Alasan aku ada uh, Uh, ada misalnya dunia ini ataupun melakukan sesuatu gitu. Nah dan juga uh, to be successful, I believe that you have to choose the company yang memang align dengan your purpose dan di mana teman-teman diberikan kesempatan untuk bisa live your purpose within the company gitu. Karena kalau misalnya uh, purpose-nya pribadi, tujuan pribadi itu berbeda dengan tujuan yang perusahaan, you will not feel like uh, um, It's worth it kalau misalnya pas lagi ada challenges uh, ataupun hal-hal yang sampai susah gitu ya. And you you won't feel like your job is fulfilling enough. Sehingga uh, first find your purpose then ensure that uh, it's aligned with the purpose of the company as well. Nah for Unilever particularly, purpose ini sangat penting. Karena um, di kita sendiri we believe that our uh, when our people have their purpose, People with purpose itu akan strive. Artinya apa? Mereka akan able untuk give the best version of themselves dan berkontribusi dengan maksimal kepada perusahaan. Gitu. If they don't feel like they're purposeful enough, mereka akan 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 gampang akan goyang. Gitu. Nah, yang kedua, apa sih yang akan uh, in my opinion, in Unilever's opinion, what will makes uh, you successful in FMCG industry uh, as an employee in FMCG company? Yang, per, yang kedua itu adalah un- jadilah katalis. penggerak gitu ya penggerak apa sih mbak maksudnya uh, apa sih kak maksudnya gitu ya penggerak itu adalah penggerak ke arah yang lebih baik jadi agent of change gitu jadi unless your curiosity uh, bawa spirit pioneering atau apa ya pioneering itu kalau bahasa Indonesia sih kepeloporan tapi agak terlalu serius gitu ya tapi pioneering spirit untuk um, mencari hal yang sel- yang baik membawa ide-ide yang berbeda Untuk membantu bisnis win dan juga bisnis growing, also yourself to win, also to grow, gitu. Nah, use confidence, your confidence to actually challenge the status quo, gitu. Jangan, um, jangan cuma feel like oh, everything is okay the way it is, gitu. Uh, karena FMCG company dari dari kepanjangannya udah udah fast moving consumer goods, gitu kan? Fast moving consumer goods, uh, nothing, uh, no such thing as status quo 
atau diem sama aja kayak gitu bentuknya. It keeps on changing and it's it changes rapidly. Jadi uh, be can be catalyst to actually help the company penggerak supaya company dan diri kita sendiri itu bisa maju ke arah yang lebih baik. Nah, yang ke Tiga itu adalah uh, yang tengah-tengahnya yang biru, be agile. Ini tadi udah beberapa speaker sempat sempat sebut kata-kata agile. Mulai dari sesi yang pertama tadi aku dengar juga sempat disebut. Nah, what is actually uh, yang bisa yang di yang dimaksud dengan agile sih? Nah, agile itu adalah karena in, tipe industrinya sendiri sangat rapid gitu ya changesnya. Kita serving yang namanya fast moving consumer goods, kenapa dibilangnya fast moving? Kalau ngomongin consumer goods, sebenarnya perusahaannya banyak banget gitu ya consumer goods. However, yang namanya fast moving itu karena uh, barang kita tuh cepat dikonsumnya habis gitu. Once it's consumed, it's habis. Cepat, nggak perlu nunggu lifetime yang kira-kira tahunan untuk produk kita selesai di, uh, digunakan oleh seseorang dan mereka purchase lagi gitu. Jadi it moves very rapidly. Nah, being agile di sini apa? Karena nature of the business yang sangat dinamis, teman-teman diharapkan untuk uh, To be successful in event CG company itu you have to be able to be comfortable dengan changes. Jadi jangan tipe yang kayak setiap ada perubahan saya hari ini kita di brief something. It that that brief can actually change the next day atau the next week atau the next month for a reason yang memang probably internally ataupun externally driven. Now we have to be comfortable with that rather than punya mindset bahwa Uh, kok berubah sih? I have done so, my, uh, so many things sebelumnya untuk brief sebelumnya kok berubah gitu kan? Nah, actually uh, that kind of mindset is is, uh, is totally cannot be kept gitu. Kalau misalnya teman-teman bekerja di FMCG industry, you need to be able to adapt dan juga shift quickly in terms of prioritizations gitu. Uh, karena you have to respond in this very speedy rate terhadap changes yang ada di market. Kayak tadi sempat ada yang ngomong mengenai learn, you have to be, uh, you have, you need to have a flexibility in terms of learning, uh, learning spirit. Gak cuma learning sebenarnya, learn something, unlearn something. Jadi kita belajar, terus kita lupakan apa yang kita, kita pelajari, dan mungkin kita belajar ulang gitu. Karena again, skill setnya mungkin cepat berubah, teknologinya mungkin cepat berubah, ways of workingnya juga mungkin cepat berubah. Nah, yang keempat itu adalah go beyond. Jadi gobion ini apa? Um, to be successful in the industry itu kamu nggak bisa pakai kacamata kuda. Jadi you cannot feel like oh, all I need to do adalah fokus ke kerjaan gue sendiri and I don't really care about what's going on other than uh, my own scope gitu. Nah, kalau misalnya di FMCG you cannot do that. Jadi teman-teman uh, especially when you are working in Unilever, we expect you to actually learn uh, and have the accountability regarding your job. Jadi teman-teman tahu what actually impact Uh, your job and how your job is actually impacting another part of the company. Gitu. Jadi uh, expand your horizon beyond your own role dan juga go beyond itu adalah uh, do not feel satisfied dengan achieving what's requested. If you know that you can deliver more and contribute more beyond your own scope, itu akan sangat appreciated when you work in a, uh, in a company. Uh, particularly uh, when you work in FNCG company like Unilever, gitu. Nah terakhir, what it takes to be successful ini juga udah di mention. Aku mungkin wrapping up uh, juga apa yang disampaikan oleh beberapa narasumber sebelumnya, gitu ya speaker sebelumnya, bahwa embrace differences and you need to be able uh, to you need to feel comfortable as well to show different side of yourself, gitu. Jadi bukan berarti when you work in FMCG itu you you fit into the mold gitu. Harus jadi tipikalnya cetakan itu kayak gini. Nah, justru di FMCG because nature of the people that we serve uh, through our business itu memang varied gitu ya, sangat berbeda-beda. Hence, kita juga expecting the talent that work in the company to actually represent that. So feel, feel comfortable with your differences, feel this, uh, comfortable showing your true colors karena itu will actually enrich uh, and makes you be able to contribute more when you work in a very uh, fast moving industry kayak uh, FMCG gitu ya karena memang uh, agile banget industrinya kayak gitu. Nah, um, itu lima hal uh, aku samberin of course banyak hal yang lain tapi I feel like this is the uh, was really important to sum up kira-kira what will makes you uh, uh, be successful in a career in FMCG. So, if we can go to, into, on to the next slide Tadi, nah ini mengenai recruitment proses. Tadi Rini sempat share what she experience uh, 
uh, when she joined the management training process in uh, dan danon right kalau nggak salah danon um, nah kira ini aku akan share juga kira-kira kalau di Unilever kayak gimana ya nah of course uh, I would I just would like to share that um, this pandemic actually changed a lot of things the uh, in the way that we do recruitment in Unilever. Jadi when we st- kita open uh, vacant, uh, open recruitment untuk menerima applications itu at the beginning of the year before the pandemic and all the working from home situations happen. And at that time, kita plannya adalah semua dilakukan secara face to face, gitu kan. So what we plan was we kita habis oke okay, habis open uh, recruitment, uh, open application di awal tahun di Q1, kita actually plan to do the face to face recruitment, yaitu ada um, FGD misalnya ataupun kayak assessment center kita itu di Q2. Um, and then pandemic happens. Semua yang sifatnya offline itu tidak mungkin dilakukan gitu ya. Mungkin ada sama other companies yang tetap melakukan face to face interview dengan uh, protokol yang menurut mereka aman, tapi Unilever is a company where safety and health is number one priority. Uh, safety and health of our employees is non negotiable sehingga we, we we are not going to risk it not for one bit gitu ya. Sehingga di tim HR sendiri mulai dari tim employer branding kita, the HR BPs, the business leaders, the talent acquisition team itu work uh, untuk memodifikasi proses rekrutmennya supaya bisa full dilakukan secara online. Nah, so what I will share uh, di slide ini actually adalah pengalaman kita tahun ini, gitu ya. Probably it will become the new normal, gitu. Nah, mulai dari online applications, of course sekarang udah pakai online ya teman-teman. And we've done it, I think since aku join uh, back then di tahun 2012 itu udah online juga. Jadi we are no longer accepting paper-based application. And then Uh, after um, the candidate submitted their application online, mereka akan uh, go onto the um, profile assessment. Profile assessment uh, nextnya uh, macam-macam ya profile assessment tergantung dari fungsinya sendiri. Lalu nextnya kita akan undang mereka untuk melakukan virtual FGD, focus group discussion. Lalu uh, nanti akan diundang juga ke final selection process, di mana di situ mereka akan mengalami case, ya, case study, role play, interview. Ada beberapa tes lainnya, tapi ini adalah overview, and then mereka akan onboard. Ini adalah uh, onboarding-nya pun di Unilever sampai dengan saat ini, pas kita onboarding our new batch uh, 1 Oktober kemarin, sampai dengan hari ini mereka working from home. Kecuali teman-teman kita yang di sales and factory, gitu, yang memang uh, harus operationally uh, go into the the workplace setiap harinya. gitu. Nah, um, again, different companies, different process. Tadi Rini udah sempat ngejelasin apa, apa yang dialami di perusahaan dia sebelumnya, dan ini adalah kurang lebih apa yang teman-teman uh, jalani di um, di uh, Unilever di mana di setiap proses itu is a, um, a collaboration between business leaders dan juga HR. Jadi uh, dari awal dari tahap virtual FGD ataupun online application pas nge-review itu kita udah involving our business leaders gitu ya. The next slide. Kalau teman nah, kalau teman-teman tertarik, aku mau berkarir di FMCG, Mbak. What uh, Kak what should I need uh, what do I need to do gitu supaya uh, aku bisa terpilih nanti kalau misalnya nanti aku apply gitu. Yang pertama adalah tanya teman-teman harus be clear dulu kenapanya? Kenapa FMCG dan kenapa memilih perusahaan yang memang teman-teman apply gitu ya. FMCG is one thing but doesn't mean that every company even empat company yang saat ini share di sesi sore ini tuh memiliki uh, cerita yang sama ataupun background yang sama, value yang sama. Pasti ada perbedaannya gitu. Nah, ensure that What is, uh, what is your values, what is your interest, what is your motivation, what is your priorities, dan bagaimana perusahaan teman-teman apply itu memang sesuai dengan uh, keempat hal ini, gitu ya. So start with the why dulu, be strong, uh, be clear on that, gitu ya. And then once you uh, are done with that, teman-teman need to familiarize yourself dengan industrinya sendiri. Artinya apa? Gak cuma industri dan juga nggak cuma, uh, tapi juga company-nya gitu ya, dan juga function. Karena setahu aku di FMCG itu mostly you are being asked to choose. mau apply-nya ke function mana, rather than untuk um, rather than untuk uh, kayak di banking gitu, di mana kata jadi general dulu, terus nanti uh, apa namanya, uh, terus nanti uh, you are akan dicoba ke semuanya gitu kan, jadi uh, bisa nanya, bisa do your own research, bisa consult ke senior dan segala macam. And then terakhir adalah build your credentials, dengerin cerita dari teman-teman tiga orang sebelumnya, tiga speaker sebelumnya, mereka ada yang mulai dari internship. Ada yang mulai dari join competition, enrich your skills juga credentials dari organization experience dan juga taking courses yang kira-kira memang relevan. Jadi prepare yourself dari ahead gitu, jangan 
masuk terus kayak bingung mau apply terus bingung sebenarnya apa yang diharapin on to my very last slide uh, nah during your recruitment process pesan aku ada empat yang pertama adalah be authentic artinya apa jangan coba untuk jadi orang lain uh, other than yourself gitu karena apa satu you will be tired keep on uh, faking it try to be other people itu akan capek sendiri dan assessors itu akan tahu whether or not you are faking it gitu dan jadi be yourself and be sure that your true self itu adalah yang dicari oleh perusahaan. Yang kedua adalah come prepare. Uh, artinya apa do your research uh, tentang posisinya, tentang programnya, tentang perusahaannya, tentang industrinya dan karena misalnya contohnya adalah big nonos itu adalah when you ask uh, when you are ask do you know about any brand mention the brands of our company. Dan itu salah sebut brand. Itu kayak uh, ya yeah, nggak banget gitu kan jadi benar-benar itu contoh simpelnya adalah come prepare yang kedua yang ketiga adalah be present artinya apa fokus jadi jangan sampai teman uh, I know that you probably you are multitasking but when you are in a recruitment process fokus gitu apa yang memang lagi disuruh ngerjain apa fokus on that jangan sampai ny- nyambi something atau feels like kelihatan teman-teman lagi mikirin aduh uh, tugas yang dari dosen yang ini udah selesai atau belum ya atau kayak you are working in another company already mau plek perusahaan lain in the middle of meetings yang lain teman-teman mau join recruitment process jangan kayak gitu. Jadi benar-benar ensure that you are present, fokus spend your energy and time itu untuk melakukan proses recruitment tersebut. Dan yang terakhir adalah be professional, knows that you are about to enter a professional world dan uh, give a good impression of yourself. Jangan sampai teman-teman juga tiba-tiba kelihatan uh, apa namanya kayak kurang respectful gitu ya terhadap prosesnya. Karena be professional itu menunjukkan kesiapan teman-teman untuk masuk ke dunia kerja. So that from an HR perspective, uh, I am keen to actually uh, um, welcome teman-teman tahun depan. Are you the next future leaders of our company and joining Unilever Future Leaders Program batch 2021 ataupun selanjutnya? Uh, thank you. So I think that's all from me. Uh, on to the next uh, session. Silahkan. Thank you so much, Kak Z, for the very insightful presentation. So, from what I can conclude from your presentation, Kak, um, Unilever is a leading company globally, and in order to strive in the company, you have to be purposeful, you have to be a catalyst, you have to embrace differences, be agile, and you have to dare to go beyond. And you also mentioned the emphasis about finding your purpose and make sure that it is aligned with your company because when it is aligned, um, it is easier for you to strive and give your best to your job. You should also be a pioneer. You should also be agile. And you should also go beyond and know what impacts your job and how your job impacts the other department. And um, in short, don't be easily complacent. You should also embrace differences and always show a different side of yourself. And lastly, uh, I think this is the most important message. Be authentic, be present. You have to come prepared and you have to be professional. Okay, so like the previous session, we are going to have a Q&A session for about 20 minutes. And I will be reading some questions from both the type form and the Slido page. So for the first two questions, uh, it is for Kak Rini. Ada dua pertanyaan, Kak. Um, untuk Kak Rini, kan sebelumnya... Uh, You have experience working uh, di kantor akuntan publik nih kak. Ada yang nanya, um, gimana sih perbedaan kerja di CAP sama di FMCG? Dan kira-kira keunggulan kerja di masing-masing industri itu yang nggak dimiliki sama industri lain itu apa? Itu, itu yang pertama. Terus yang kedua, um, ada yang nanya tentang tahap online assessment kak ini. Um, sharing tips belajar kakak uh, untuk uh, online assessment dan Ada yang nanya juga, is it all in English or not? Gitu. Oke, okay, so. Thank you for the question. Uh, pertama yang, aku coba jawab yang ini dulu yang, yang tentang um, perbedaan kerja di KAP dan FMCG dan uh, keuntungan kerja di both industries uh, compared to others. ya. Um, mungkin kalau perbedaannya yang kelihatan banget dari Uh, type flexibility-nya sih. Kalau misalnya di FMCG, as mentioned dari speaker-speaker sebelumnya, itu um, kita bisa fleksibel kapan mau masuk kantor dan 
um, kapan mau pulang as long as kita ada kita spend at least eight to nine hours gitu kan di kantor nah tapi kalau misalnya kita di KAP itu kan lebih ke client um, oriented gitu jadi ya kita lebih har- kadang kalau misalnya di assign ke project yang ada di klien kita udah eh, benar-benar harus nyesuain lah sama culture di sana tuh gimana tapi uh, the main thing is yang lebih yang aku coba ya aku bisa lihat mm-hmm. ya keuntungan kerja di both industry itu agility-nya lagi kayak kita harus benar-benar um, bisa menyesuaikan diri dan menempatkan diri di kondisi-kondisi yang berbeda kalau di FMCG as mentioned by speaker sebelumnya itu kan agile banget terus uh, conditionnya itu bisa berubah both internal and externally driven gitu kan as mentioned sama Kazika juga tadi nah itu tuh uh, bikin kita harus kayak bak- bak- uh, cepat menyesuaikan diri nah di uh, consulting atau di KAP juga gitu every client approachnya beda every client um, Uh, yang mereka mau dan proyek yang kita berikan ke mereka deliverable-nya juga beda jadi harus adjust di situ. Uh, does that answer the question? Yes, Kak. That answers the question. Okay, okay. okay. Uh, now on to the second and the third question. Um, mm-hmm. On the online assessment, waktu itu yang aku lihat adalah itu te- lebih ke kuantitatif uh, reasoning dan juga tentang uh, verbal reasoning juga kan. Itu Uh, pertanyaannya sedikit mirip GMAP, cuman mungkin nggak benar-benar mirip banget lah kayak ada beda, cuman uh, somewhat setipe gitu. Tapi as I mentioned juga, every company kan uh, online assessmentnya beda-beda. Tapi yes, it's all in English. Proses dari online recruitmentnya, ter- eh, sorry, online assessment, terus interview dan lain-lain semuanya itu uh, in English. Thank you for the question. Okay. Um, next two questions itu untuk Kak Z. Jadi yang pertama, uh, Kak, are there any tips or or soft and hard skills that I can learn at a young age to get me prepared to enter the HR world? And is it possible for a non-psychology major graduate to work in HR? Itu yang pertanyaan pertama. Yang kedua, um, Kak, saat interview biasanya kan dikasih kesempatan untuk nanya. Pertanyaan yang kayak gimana sih yang bisa ditanyakan ke interviewer dan um, apa itu bisa menjadi poin plus? Oke, okay, thank you Mayra for uh, sharing the stories. Uh, sorry, saya sharing the questions dari teman-teman yang hadir di sore hari ini gitu ya. Um, pertama, oke, okay, soft and hard skills for HR dan apakah lulusan non psikologi itu bisa masuk ke HR? Um, soft skills and hard skills. Kalau soft skills, um, basically again uh, HR itu I believe is a functions di mana teman-teman tuh akan successful di sana if we have the patient. Jadi uh, uh, it will answer the second question uh, apakah non psychological background itu bisa masuk atau tidak? Definitely bisa karena uh, working in HR itu requires patient. Uh, memang dan makanya jangan don't be blinded that oh HR is actually only recruiting people oh it's actually only dealing with uh, administrative of the employees it is not jadi do do your research first supaya teman-teman benar-benar tahu what's actually required untuk kerja di HR gitu kan um, NFI misalnya kayak aku share uh, di Unilever ya di organisasi tempat aku bekerja aku kebetulan online Uh, aku lulusan psikologi, aku kerja di HR. My boss, my HR VP, itu beliau adalah lulusan uh, hubungan internasional. My peers, ada head of HR untuk uh, function lain, itu beliau adalah electrical engineer. Ada uh, my current team member, industrial engineering. Jadi totally macam-macam, gitu kan backgroundnya macam-macam banget. And but one thing adalah mereka very passionate uh, about mm, um, developing through other, apa namanya uh, achieving through others mereka tahu HR itu sebenarnya apa again HR enggak cuman cuman mengenai oh I love to talk to other people hence uh, kayaknya aku sering dicurhatin sama teman-teman aku jadi aku pelaya ke HR this not gitu ya jadi cuman <laughs> uh, HR is not a shoulder to cry on but actually more beyond that you preparing the talent of the company the organization structure design of the company the right culture Engage, uh, people engagement, well-being of the company, ensuring that the people have the right skills and knowledge required um, for them to thrive in their roles ataupun in the company. So it's very broad gitu ya. Ada reward system juga semacam-macam. Soft skills and hard skills. Yang pertama adalah um, kalau 
I don't know whether agility is actually a soft skills, tapi mindset, mungkin lebih ke mindset kali ya. Uh, aku lebih ke mindset. Knows that uh, nothing will be set in stone regarding something. Bahwa it will continuously change. Skills of HR juga akan develop. HR yang dulu, mulai dari yang benar-benar tradisional, mungkin dulu, dulu aja tuh very tradisional mengenai, oh HR cuma ngerekrut orang, HR ngurusin gajinya orang, sama ngurusin kalau karyawan keluar gitu. That's it. But our role has evolved beyond that. Jadi for, for you to actually have the agility and hunger to learn itu adalah um, open mindedness juga adalah sangat penting. Nah untuk hard uh, communication, you will deal with people. At the end of the day, you will deal, you will deal with people. And again, sebenarnya apa yang aku share untuk HR, whatever your function is itu akan relevan gitu ya. You will, you will deal with people hand satu communication skills. Ensure that you you are able to convey your message uh, correctly. Kalau tadi teman kita yang dari PNG, siapa? Sheryl, uh, say misalnya uh, straight straight talk atau straight forwardness. Bukan berarti blunt dan enggak uh, sopan gitu ya, tapi to be able to really convey apa yang teman-teman maksudkan ke, kepada or, lawan bicara itu sangat penting. For you to be able to share your ideas itu juga sangat penting. To be able uh, to be data driven. Karena kalau di dalam zaman sekarang tuh nggak bisa kayak oh feeling aku adalah A, sehingga saya sarankan sesuai dengan feeling saya. Plak, mungkin <laughs> kayak akan laku gitu kan, kalau kayak gitu. Jadi pasti teman-teman akan diminta, what's actually the reasoning behind your proposals? Harus ada analytical skills di sana, harus ada data-driven uh, proposals juga teman-teman uh, berikan di sana. Khusus untuk HR, uh, of course, kalau hard skills, um, macam-macam ya teman-teman, organization design, change management, you are usually... Uh, will lead a lot of change management process in your uh, company so have that knowledge mengenai uh, knowledge management lalu um, juga uh, hard skills yang lain ya kalau technical banyak ya reward itu seperti apa um, reward itu enggak cuma salary tapi harus salary structures whatever it is what, how to retain employees segala macam banyak but again everything can actually be learned once you are in the job what is important adalah You have the right in, uh, interest untuk memang masuk perusahaan tersebut. Nah, yang kedua uh, tadi uh, boleh diulang pertanyaannya nggak? <laughs> yang kedua tentang ini kak, kan biasanya kalau misalkan interview itu kan kita dikasih oh. kesempatan yeah, yeah, yeah. Ya, terus kayak yeah, 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 yeah. pertanyaan yang bagus tuh yang gimana sih yang mungkin bisa bisa okay. jadi poin plus aja gitu? Oke, okay. um, personally aku akan jawab uh, bukan dari sudut pandang, aku bukan representing the whole uh, line managers ataupun hiring managers gitu ya, tapi I'm representing my own view. Um, what I consider as a good, ya satu, uh, kalau misalnya memang diberikan, uh, now is your turn to actually ask something to us as a panelist, do you have any questions? Pertama jawabannya adalah, yes, I do have. Jadi jangan sampai bilang, nggak oh, ada, udah cukup kayaknya semuanya. Oke, okay. <laughs> tapi actually use that opportunity gitu kan. Kenapa? Karena itu itu actually itu menunjukkan your curiosity, your genuine interest kepada company gitu. Jadi pertama adalah pesannya adalah gunakan kesempatannya. Nah, masalah pertanyaannya apa? Uh, pertanyaannya itu bisa macam-macam, tapi saran aku adalah menunjukkan bagi se- sejauh mana interest teman-teman dan curiosity teman-teman terhadap perusahaan ataupun posisi yang di apply gitu ya. It can be anything. Jadi saran aku adalah jangan sampai jangan gunakan pertanyaan tersebut untuk tanya uh, so what's the next process? Iya. Yeah. <laughs> When you're talking to a hiring manager apalagi dari bisnis gitu kan ya itu bisa ditanyain ke, ke rekruternya nanti gitu kan. But actually knows who are interviewing. Misalnya kalau misalnya mengenai bisnis, so bisa nanya atau enggak do your research bisa dari mengenai company-nya saja. So I know that probably Unilever udah uh, 80 tahun lebih di uh, Indonesia. What are the biggest change yang pernah dilakukan? Misalnya kayak gitu kan. Jadi bisa tentang perusahaannya, bisa juga tentang orang tersebut, misalnya kayak, saya tahu Bapak, uh, Bapak kalau I did my research, misalnya bilang gitu, I did my research that I know that you join to the company actually as management training. So, and now you've been in the company for like uh, 10 years misalnya. So, what makes you stay that long? What uh, what makes you stick to the company? You know, that kind of questions yang benar-benar teman-teman tuh kayak, you actually prep yourself to ask that questions, dan ketahuan memang benar-benar penasaran, itu adalah something that appreciate, appreciated, appreciated, Uh, terutama dari aku sebagai HR. I feel like the candidate is really really interested to join my company. Itu sih kumaira kira-kira dari aku. Oke, okay, thank you Kak Z. Yeah. Um, the next two questions ini untuk both Kak Z sama Karini. Um, jadi yang pertama adalah 
um, what is the hardest obstacle that you have ever faced in your job and how do you uh, overcome it? Mungkin dari Kari ini duluan yang jawab, Kak. Okay, thank you for the question. Um, the hardest obstacle, yeah. Um, for me, the hardest obstacle itu probably um, aku sekarang lagi dicemplungin ke cross-function assignment. As I mentioned tadi, aku dicemplungin ke engineering and technology department, to which I have no uh, knowledge tentang engineering sendiri. Tapi, jadi aku di sini tuh benar-benar kayak learn something new banget, tapi at the same time, harus bisa cepat catch up gitu. Karena they expect so much, dan aku juga harus deliver project-projectku at the same time kan. Tapi uh, mungkin kalau di first few uh, semester, the first two semesters, at least aku udah tahu nih kayak uh, what to expect gitu on my projects kan. Karena ya emang background-nya aku waktu itu kebetulan pas gitu sesuai kan di finance. Tapi kalau di engineering ini, kayak aku tiba-tiba disuruh Um, but spare part, spare part refurbishment-nya, plan-nya gimana, strateginya, so, kayak, ini overhaul proses, ini bagaimana, so, which all, all those things are very new to me, and very, aku unfamiliar banget lah tentang kedua hal itu, gitu, jadi, it's uh, the biggest challenge for me, sama mungkin ini sih, um, mungkin aku mau add lagi, tentang, uh, um, meminta tolong ke semua orang untuk bantuin project kita itu enggak always as smoothly gitu loh kayak mungkin ada orang yang willing to work with us ada juga yang enggak even if kita udah try to be nice dan udah kayak tadi aku bilang udah try to use the power of informal approach gitu kadang enang it's not always about us tapi mungkin karena dia juga lagi swamp sama kerjaannya sendiri jadi itu sih itu juga a big challenge for me jadi coba harus untuk bisa hmm, kreatif dikit kayak oh konsep nemu orang kayak gini ini harus gimana gitu responnya kita kita oke okay. nah um, kalau aku sendiri hardest obstacle throughout the career journey itu lebih ke I don't know whether probably resonates with other people as well uh, beating your own self doubt jadi breaking out from the apa namanya meragukan diri sendiri bahwa Can I really do it? Do I really deserve this? You know that kind of atau salah nggak sih gue kalau melakukan ini? Is it not aligned to other people's expectations? That kind of self doubt itu kan pasti throughout the journey mungkin nanti teman-teman uh, uh, nanti kalau masuk ke dunia bekerja you will have that kind of inner talk gitu ya inner voices di dalam sendiri. Nah to actually beat that and be able to make peace with that itu adalah one of the hardest obstacle karena uh, When I first joined, I was single. I don't have any, I don't have no, no, no attachment or whatever it is. Now, um, years in my career, I married. I have kids. Challenges-nya akan beda-beda. Gitu ya. Nah, um, why is it hardest? Karena, again, kalau menurut aku, you need, apa ya, ja, kalau misalnya kita keep on comparing ourselves dengan things beyond our, uh, kayak orang di luar sana, ada goals, yeah, we set ourselves against the expectation of others. itu akan capek terus gitu kan. Hence, uh, how to actually um, make peace with that, itu adalah to uh, to set it internally, dan knows what's important to you, uh, dan dengan dengan kamu tahu apa yang penting buat kamu, apa yang menjadi prioritas, dan all the self-doubt, itu teman-teman bisa bilang, kok gue pantas gak ya? Aduh, for example, I did not join the company's management training. Then aku nanya, when I got promoted, tapi teman-teman ya, uh, management training gue ada yang belum naik nih, Uh, misalnya kayak gitu kan, do I, do I really deserve this promotion for example, or like, kayak gimana, but I feel, justru aku, mindset aku adalah, exactly, jalur masuk adalah jalur masuk, but when you are in the game, it's really depending on how are you going to drive your career, so for example, teman-teman bisa bertanya sini, do I really need to join through MT, basically itu cuma salah satu pintu masuk, But when you are in the company, then you are in the same competition, apalagi kalau udah lulus dari jernihnya gitu ya, you're, Ya, basically kalau aku selalu bilang selama ini adalah you have uh, yang kalau misalkan manajemen training itu dikasih mobil Ferrari, kalau yang mungkin yang lain itu dikasih mobilnya ya Honda, for example gitu ya Toyota whatever it is. But again, depending on how you drive the car. Kalau dikasih Ferrari and you drive it only 5, 50 km per hour, yang dikasih Honda nyetirnya udah ngebut banget 100 km per jam. Siapa yang akan sampai ke garis finish lebih cepat? See, again, all that mindset gitu kan. Jadi, um, having that positive 
uh, and knows your worth itu sangat penting karena it will helps you whenever you have the self doubt and since that was my biggest obstacle having the good faith in myself uh, and know that I'm worth it itu ngebantu banget sih so that's probably what I can share oke okay, sangat bagus banget jawabannya um, this is the last question yeah, for both Kak Ivy and Karini considering waktunya memang bentar lagi um, kurang lebih gini Kak gimana sih caranya kakak-kakak tetap strive and give your, uh, your best at your job while also maintaining work-life balance gitu jadi kayak keep up with friends and family uh, kira-kira ada tipsnya kah um, untuk bisa kayak gitu mungkin dari Kak Ivy duluan so how uh, I strive to give my best yet maintaining work and life balance gitu ya Yang pertama adalah define dulu. For yourself, what does work and life balance means? Jadi do not use the definition of others. Probably people have different. Namanya work and life balance, start on time, start jam 8, selesai jam 5, ada yang kayak gitu kan. But actually, define your own definition of work and life balance dulu. Hence, baru teman-teman bisa, uh, bisa mendefinisikan whether it's working or not. Gitu. Nah, um, kalau personally aku kayak gimana, aku itu, aku kasih tahu dulu apa sih acceptable buat gue dari segi work, apa yang harus gue deliver dan apa dari segi life gitu ya. What is my big rocks? Kalau aku bilangnya my priorities adalah batu besarnya aku tuh apa? That is non negotiable and I need to uh, maintain that. Yang pertama adalah my job itu the big rock, apa namanya the priorities need to be delivered, but at the same time I need to be present saat memang waktu dengan keluarga I need to be present at that. Nah. Uh, Karena aku udah tahu big rocks aku apa, I work my way around it. Jadi, uh, misalnya, kalau lagi di kantor, ya aku sembunyi. Aku sembunyi, aku di ruang, dalam di kamar tertentu gitu lagi. Kalau ngomong kayak gini, I'm not working in the living room where my kids are playing gitu kan. Otherwise, it will be chaotic. Gak mungkin, gue nggak bisa fokus. Mereka juga yang ada, uh, gak, uh, apa namanya, clinging on their mom gitu. Gak mungkin gitu kan. And also, um, aku, uh, apa namanya, aku juga, set expectation with my line managers, clear up bahwa this is my condition, and supaya, jadi let your situation known by others, your team members, your line managers, your peers, supaya mereka juga help you to uh, and supporting you uh, towards your, um, apa namanya, boundary study, gitu kan. Now, when you are at home, di rumah, ya aku misalnya, uh, aku, mungkin banyak yang orang-orang comfortable, I'm using one phone untuk kerja sama untuk rumah. Nah, aku adalah tipe yang kayak aku pisahin. Sehingga apa? I can easily throw that other phone away kalau misalnya mau udah tutup laptop gitu ya. Jadi, uh, and I can first, uh, play with my own personal phone ya, pas lagi di luar jam kerja. Sehingga jangan sampai, kalau aku campurin, imagine that lagi ngeliatin pribadi, tiba-tiba ping, 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 muncul lagi notification, email, whatever it is gitu kan. Itu akan jadi PR banget. Jadi, that's one of my way to actually really limit boundaries. Dan uh, other thing yang menurut aku juga penting adalah make peace with yourself. Jadi berdamailah dengan kom, dengan kompromis yang harus memang harus dilakukan. Misalnya kayak lagi di rumah nih sekarang. Ada yang mungkin mau mulai kerja tahun depan segala macam. Probably di rumah nggak akan ideal bahwa kita bisa fokus 100% di jam kerja uh, and then fully enggak bisa uh, bersih sama sekali pas after office, office hour. Kalau misalnya memang you feel like uh, you cannot do everything at the uh, normal hours and you need to work at night, don't beat yourself because of that. Karena that's normal gitu ya. Sometimes ada momen-momen di mana you have to do, uh, make a flexibility around it, tapi just be conscious of that rather than, jangan sampai ketanya lain, gimana sih lu, you did not do well during the day, makanya lu tuh kerja sekarang gitu. Jangan sampai kayak gitu, justru kayak, oh this is normal, this is just one time. Ini gue terjadi karena tadi gue sempat miss di sini gitu kan. Sempat ada kegiatan lain yang bikin gue nggak bisa ngerjain, sehingga malam harus kerja lagi. Jadi make, ya berdamailah dengan all the, uh, apa namanya penyesuaian yang memang harus terjadi selama perjalanannya gitu sih dari aku kira-kira ceritanya mungkin dari Rini agak beda silahkan Rini <laughs> aku personally setuju banget sih sama yang Kazi bilang tentang uh, kita harus define uh, our own work life balance karena everyone has different definition kan tentang apa sih work life balance untuk mereka gitu kalau uh, aku personally um, aku selalu coba set my goal di kantor itu apa, how I'm gonna do it, and I try to uh, focus on that gitu, sama lagi di office hour, jadi before I go to work, aku udah tahu nih, oke okay, hari ini gue bakal kerja ini, 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 jadi sama 9 jam di kantor itu bakal fokus gitu, 
Tapi before or after I go to work, aku biasanya always try to do the things that I enjoy gitu. Jadi, for example, kebetulan kan karena aku juga belum berkeluarga dan lain-lain, aku sebelum kantor biasanya suka um, grab a coffee dulu sama temanku yang kebetulan kerjanya dari different industry gitu. Nah, di situ biasanya kita suka share tentang uh, apa namanya, iya nih gue lagi struggling di sini atau gue lagi pengen coba explore ini. Dan di situ kayak aku tuh biasanya suka termotivasi gitu. Wah, teman-teman aku pada lagi strivingnya, lagi pada... Um, hustling banget nih, jadi akunya juga termotivasi untuk kayak, oh okay, ntar gue nyampe kantor uh, harus kayak gini-gini, ah jadi suka lebih termotivasi gitu, dan kalau pas pulang kantor juga, misalnya ada penat lagi di kantor tadi karena udah capek dan lain-lain, kita juga bisa melepas stres dan penat itu sih aku, aku that's uh, my way of balancing between work and life oke okay. Um, thank you so much Karini for your answer I would like to also say that question marks the end of the second session and the end of our webinar for today once again I would like to give thanks to Kazi and Karini for the insights and to make time to share their experiences for us in the middle of your busy schedule and I would like to thank all of you for attending this webinar And on behalf of UI Women in Business, I would like to express our gratitude and hope that all of you gain the much needed insights to enter the FMCG industry. Um, before we close the session once and for all, we will have a photo session led by our MedCom team. Okay, so really or Jane? Uh, okay. Hi everyone, can you please turn on the camera so far that they will open pages of Zoom. You may hold your position. Okay. So I will wait until 4.17, until everyone's camera. Okay. Mungkin buat kakak-kakaknya bisa di turn on the camera biar kakak-kakaknya juga foto sama teman-temannya. Oke, okay, so first slide ya yeah, everyone. I'm going to count. One, two, three. Okay. Second slide. Please hold your camera guys. One, two, three. Okay, third slide. Four. Okay, um, thank you so much, Kashifa. Thank you, everyone. Okay, thank you, Freely. Thank you, everyone, for attending and Once again, thank you for all the speakers. Um, yeah, that's the end of our webinar for today. And we will see you on the next Ask a Sister. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you.